That last weekend at Berkeley, the extra point was good and the great, amazing comeback by the University of Washington. Along with John Spagnola, I'm Roger Twybelin. John, even more amazing than that comeback by the Huskies was the fact that Damon Heward was still in their quarterback at the end. Four interceptions, a couple of fumbles, but Lambright stayed with him and it paid dividends. He certainly did. Damon Heward, to his credit, hung in there throughout the game and overcame some adversity. And Jim Lambright hung with him, didn't pull his quarterback, and with three and a half minutes left in the game, he was a near-perfect 12 for 14. But he'll be facing a UCLA hey, defense led by Jameer Miller, who specializes in the turnover. Jameer Miller had four and a half of his team's 11 sacks last week against BYU. Both of those numbers represent school records. Well, coming up next, ABC Sports College Football. Today we present a Pac-10 matchup featuring the Huskies of the University of Washington and the Bruins of UCLA. Washington won the toss, they deferred, and UCLA will receive Jason Crabb, the senior from Laguna Beach, California, to kick it off. And Derek Ayers, 25. Teddy Lawrence, number two, back deep for UCLA. That is Ayers. And no! Lawrence says, don't go anywhere, buddy. Stay right there, and we'll just bring it on out to the 20-yard line to get this thing started today. That might be his best stop of the afternoon. <laughs> Wayne Cook, the quarterback for the UCLA Bruins. He's had an outstanding year. Nine touchdowns, just one interception. 83 consecutive attempts without an INT. And this is the way it'll shape up for Wayne Cook and the UCLA Bruins with Stokes. He's been the main man so far this year. Eight touchdown receptions. Jordan Allis, Davis, and Milliner with back-to-back 100-yard -back games. And with some injuries, Ricky Davis getting the start at running back. But UCLA will open up with three wide receivers and the lone setback. First and 10, 20-yard line. Delay, and that's Milliner on the right side. Good, strong running. Gain of about three by James Milliner, Andy Mason, and Steve Springstead on the tackle. And let's set the offensive line. Nowitzki in his 40th consecutive start for the Bruins. And Vaughn Parker, the All-America, they're the bookends and tackles for Terry Donahue's UCLA Bruins. Second down and seven, 23-yard line. UCLA will send Stokes, number 18, and Kevin Jordan, number four, to the top of your screen. Going nowhere. Ricky Davis, the ball carrier, and Jamal Fontaine was right there to stack him up. And let's check that Washington defense for you right now. Fourth in the nation in rushing defense. Fontaine is the main man. 36 tackles, 12 of those for losses. The linebackers, Demetrius Devers getting the start today in place of the injured Donovan Schmidt. And in the secondary for the Huskies of Washington, a new group this year, and they'll be tested today on third down and eight from the 22-yard line. Out of the shotgun. Wayne Cook and the Bruins have been slow starters offensively this year as they'll swing it to Milliner on the far side, and he has nowhere to go with the 25-yard line. Hillary Butler and Lewis Jones both there to stop him. That's the first pass reception of the year by fullback James Milliner. And that'll bring up a punting situation for the Bruins of UCLA. One nice thing about the UCLA offense, even though they didn't convert here, is that Wayne Cook is not going to take unnecessary chances with the football. He's now thrown 84 passes without an interception this year. They're not going to take chances because they have a lot of faith in their defense. Bino Bryant back deep, and Darren Shager to punt from inside his 10-yard line. Bryant, the all-time leading punt returner in Washington history, is brought down at the 49-yard line for the Bruins of UCLA. Down on the coverage was Andrew McClave, number 42. And there's a look at Damon Hewitt. I don't know, it looks a little bit like the late Elvis Presley in my mind. But look at that game last week. You see the first 56 minutes, 10 of 20, four interceptions, two fumbles. In the last 347, 12 of 14, and two touchdowns. Bruner, watch him, the tight end. He's their leading receiver. As Washington will have a first and 10 from their own 49-yard line. Hewitt wants to throw, and he gets it to Kaufman. Always dangerous, and Kaufman, a gain of about five. Loose ball. Football came loose from Kaufman, but it looked like he was able to recover his own fumble. 
The offensive line's a good, solid group for the University of Washington. And Tom Gallagher will keep an eye on him, the senior, 6'5 and 300 pounds. Damon Heward, sophomore, 6'4, 220 pounds. As Coach Jim Lambright said he went from being a 20-year-old to a 40-year-old last week in that come from behind victory as they pull two men and going nowhere that time is the fullback Matt Jones, Jameer Miller, the junior from El Cerrito, the first man to get in there as we'll take a look at that defensive line for UCLA. The wild man, George Case in the middle at nose guard, the inspirational leader. You just saw Miller make the tackle. 23 tackles on the year, 10 of those for losses. And then in the secondary for the Bruins, Marvin Goodwin, strong safety, number 22. He'll come up and put a lick on you. He's got 31 tackles on the year and a couple of interceptions. Third down and nine. Three wideouts for the Huskies. Heward looking right, has got a man open, and the reception made by Dave Janoski. That's enough for the first down at the 35-yard line. Carl Greenwood on the tackle, 17 yards on the pickup. And, John, that's a guy that's just caught four balls this year. He only caught four passes this year because Jason Shelley has been suspended. He's out for the season, but he runs a good little head move inside. Is enough to free uh, Carl Greenwood as Janoski takes it outside. What I noticed that, and we'll keep an eye on this today, is Heward pretty much always looks in the direction in which he's going to throw the football. That's something as he develops, he'll stop doing as much. On first and 10 from the 32, Napoleon oh, yeah. Kaufman. And Kaufman averaging over five yards a carry, nearly 600 yards rushing this year. Carl Greenwood came up to make the tackle. Napoleon Kaufman from nearby Lompoc, California, 5'9 and 175, five rushing touchdowns. Also a threat catching the ball out of the backfield. And UCLA defensively is scared to death about Kaufman. You're going to see not only good front side rush defense, but backside Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, has emphasized everybody has to stay in their lanes against Kaufman because he can break it anywhere. Second down at six from the 28. That's Kaufman in motion with double tight ends. The handoff to the fullback. That's Matt Jones. Jones inside the five, down to the three-yard line. Solid blocking up front, and Matt Jones, the senior from Portland, Oregon, finally brought down by Teddy Lawrence. Kaufman puts uh, himself in motion. You don't see that, but that removes a linebacker, and Matt Jones is able to break it right up the middle with some powerful running right in the middle of that UCLA defense. But the motion by Kaufman, uh, a smart play by Washington as they were able to get UCLA's attention on Kaufman as they put him in motion after running him on the previous play. First and goal from the three, Kaufman, outside, touchdown! Napoleon Kaufman with the push-ups. Sixth rushing touchdown of the year for Napoleon Kaufman, and John, we talked before the game, who can run the football might be the team that wins this game today. That's right. Watch the block by number 60, Andrew Peterson, as he just waffles his guy on the right side, and Kaufman is able to get into the end zone. Good blocking up front, and this was what Washington wants to do offensively, just pound the football. They have a powerful running attack. Travis Hansen, 14 out of 14 this year on the point afters, and that's good. So with 11 minutes to go, first quarter from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, Washington leads UCLA 7-0. Roger Twobble, John Spagnola here with you in the uh, Rose Bowl. Teddy Lawrence and Derek Ayers uh, back deep as Jason Crabb will kick it off. The Huskies have jumped out to the quick 7-0 lead. And Ayers fumbles the ball. And Teddy Lawrence loses it. Washington's got it. Washington's got it. Number one, Lewis Jones. Number one, Lewis Jones fell on it. And unbelievable. You could say that two out of the last three kickoffs for the Huskies have, uh, have uh, turned into fumble recoveries as they got an onside kick against Cal, and they get one here right here. But this ball easily should have been caught and then recovered as John Lewis uh, just steps right on. I'm sorry, Lewis Jones, number one, just steps right in, makes the recovery. 
Well, Lawrence tried to do the right thing and covered it up. It just bounced off his shoulder. And there's Jim Lambright, the first-year head coach, who hopes to have a little bit more success against the Bruins than his predecessor. Don James was 5-8-1 and one against the Bruins, the only Pac-10 team he didn't have a winning record against. On first and goal from the three, Heward will throw for the corner and just overthrown Matt Jones, the intended receiver, the fullback out there. So... Washington, John, had done a good job in their previous previous to the Cal game last week in forcing those turnovers, making the other teams pay for them. And they got a real break there on a kickoff. Well, it's interesting, too, because UCLA leads the nation in turnover margin with plus three. They, they're very, very stingy when it comes to giving the ball up. But I also think that Lambright's decision to kick off initially has put his team in a good position here. They score, they hold. Uh, and now they're able to capitalize on the turnover deep in UCLA territory. Second and goal from the three. Heward still got it. Gets maybe a yard down to the two-yard line. Matt Warner, 92. The first man to hit him, senior from Yorba Linda. Uh, Warner, along with uh, Parker and Nowitzki on the offense, uh, the only three players for UCLA to uh, have started the game in 1990, the last time these two teams played one another. These have been close games uh, the last several years between UCLA and uh, Washington. Seven of the last eight games have been decided by seven or fewer points as Terry Donahue looks on on a third and goal from the two-yard line for the Huskies. That's Leif Johnson in motion. Kaufman! No signal. No signal. UCLA saying they've got the football. And the officials are signaling yes indeed. One thing UCLA teaches is to take the football away. That's their 21st turnover this year. And they teach to hold ball carriers up and strip ball carriers. It's something that they've been charting since the first day of training camp this year. Napoleon Kaufman is telling his coach and players on the sideline, hey, the ball I was down or the ball didn't really come out. But that's to no avail as Terry Dunahue does a good job with his staff of really preaching to get the turnovers defensively. And what a key turnover for the UCLA team. It looked like Donnie Edwards, number 23, that came up with a strip. And that would be his second fumble recovery of the year. So from the one-yard line, the Bruins. And Cook loses it. Ball lost in the end zone. Cook loses the snap. And Washington signaling they've got it. It's either a safety or a touchdown. Safety. It's a safety. So the mishandled snap. Look at the left snap. guard pull. While the snap is mishandled, the left guard pulls number 76, Derek Stevens. It gets in the way. UCLA is able to recover it and only lose two points instead of seven. See how the ball pops out, and by then, Wayne Cook can't clear his left guard who's pulling. That's Derek Stevens, 76. That's, that's right. It looks like Stevens had a chance at recovering, and I think he did recover it, and that's what led to the safety. Now, keep in mind that uh, UCLA has had a couple of offensive linemen injured, including uh, their center. So Mike Flanagan, a sophomore from Sacramento, making just his second start. Christensen, their starter, is out. Uh, Jonathan Ogden, a starter, tackles also out. So uh, a miscue on the snap between between Cook and Flanagan. And this has been a uh, wild scene here for the last couple of minutes. So the safety and Washington now leads nine to nothing. Let's take a look at the, the snap again. Because uh, sometimes quarterbacks will pull out too soon, especially if they know they have to clear a guard who's well, going to be pulling on the running It's kind of unusual to be pulling right down here. there, too. The ball comes up all right. Seems like Cook just doesn't get his hands on the ball and, and loses it And by the time the guard's pulling. You are right, though, Roger. That is a risky play to yeah. call if you're going to pull guards. Usually you just try and wedge the blockers and Absolutely. try and force a little room I mean, that, there for you. That's yourself. a lot of movement close on the goal line because you know, John, that defense is going to pitch in on you. And uh, trying to get that snap and make a move with that big guard coming along there, I'm sure Cook knew that situation was trying to get out of the way quickly enough to allow the guard to come by. So we've got a free kick situation. And Darren Shaker will punt it. Bino Bryant back along with Napoleon Kaufman. Two very dangerous return men. So with 9.49 to go, first quarter, Washington leads at 9 to nothing. Beautiful punt. Kaufman will take it from the 25 and try the left side and is brought down at the 43-yard line. And right now, let's send you to New York and John Saunders. Thank you very much, uh, John. So a uh, sort of a wild and willy, I'll turn it over. No, we'll turn it over back to you. No, we'll turn it over back to you, scenario. 
And with 9.43 to go, first quarter, 9-0. Washington leads as Kralik goes in motion to the far side for the Huskies. First and 10 from the 43-yard line, and Napoleon Kaufman eludes one tackle and manages to gain a couple back, but he still loses a yard or two. Jameer Miller, 95, the first man back in there for the Bruins of UCLA. And he's done a little bit of everything this year, uh, John. 23 tackles, 10 of those for losses, eight and a half sacks, and he's got a fumble recovery. He does, and he's been in the backfield on two plays already today. He had a tackle for a loss earlier today on Washington's first drive. So he's going to spend a lot of time in that backfield, and he is, as I said, emerging as one of the best pass rushing specialists in the country. He's got eight and a half sacks over the last three games and now has 19 and a half on his career. On second and 11, wide open is Conwell, the tight end. Conwell gets all the way inside the 20-yard line. Donovan Gallatin, 26, one of the men to bring him down. 39 yards on the pickup. Greenwood also there on the tackle. Watch the play action pass. Just freeze the linebackers. You can see Conwell release. There are no linebackers near Conwell. They should be within a yard or two of him on a pass play. He actually caught the ball and expected to get hit, <laughs> realized hey. he was in the open field. I'll tell you, sometimes as a tight end, that's a little bit embarrassing. You say, where is everybody? You're used to getting hit, aren't you, that's John, right. as a tight end hey, coming tight across? Ends yeah. catch the ball, and they put their head down. When they're in open space, they're, they're at a loss. But it reminds me of the play that Washington ran last week against Cal in which Conwell fumbled, right. but it was the same type of play. And when you have the kind of running game that the Huskies have, those are kind of plays are very effective. Well, Damon Hewitt off to a much better start this week than last week against the University of California. And one of the things they've had to do is try to adjust to the loss of Jason Shelley, who had 17 receptions. He's been suspended for the year, and they are looking at their tight ends more. Brunner now their leading receiver, and Conwell on a first and 10 from the 19-yard line. Hewitt will check off at the line of scrimmage. And they'll give it to Kaufman. Left side, it's a foot race! No, they call him out at the one-yard line. Tommy Bennett was the man that eventually forced him out. 18 yards on the pickup for Napoleon Kaufman. When you have the penetration upfield that a Jameer Miller applies, if you can get inside that penetration, as Washington does right there and burst upfield as Kaufman does, let's watch his feet and see where he steps out. Geez, it appears that maybe that right foot might have touched the line, and that's have, where yeah. the ball was. But uh, you just get a good idea of the explosiveness of this guy. He was held in check somewhat last week. And I look like, to me, he got in the end zone. First and goal from the one-yard line. Kaufman stumbles, but he gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Kaufman running over to the left side again for a touchdown. It seems that most of the gains for the Washington Husky offense have come Your off the left side of their uh, offensive line. Point after, Travis Hansen. Perfect so far this year, 15 out of 15. And that one is no good. <laughs> so he misses his first extra point try of the year. And with 8.28 to go, first quarter, Washington leads UCLA 15 to nothing. NBC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see the all-new Chevy cars for 1994. By Magnavox, the ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart, very smart. By the light beer with the great imported taste, Amstel Light. Right. By Allied Signals, Fram Filters. You can pay a little now or a lot later. Along with John Spagnuolo, I'm Roger Twibell at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Jason Crabb to kick it off, and... Teddy Lawrence, number two, and Derek Ayers, 25, and that's Ayers who'll take it. And he is brought down at the 11-yard line. Ayers had had just one kickoff return coming into this game, but Colbert, who usually is back on kick returns, is injured. Good blocking on the left side. That's 60, Andrew Peterson, 71. Pete Pearson, the big tight end, Conwell. Clear a massive hole on the inside there, and the Huskies have had a lot of success so far running the football against UCLA. UCLA defensively has averaged only 1.1 yards per rush in the last three games, but they played Stanford, BYU, and San Diego State, and I think 
now UCLA is playing against a lot better opposition today in the Washington Huskies. Well, they beat San Diego State 52-13 and BYU 68-14 on first and 10 from the 12-yard line. Cook back to throw, and he's got a man at the 20-yard line. The reception made by J.J. Stokes, number 18, the junior from San Diego. Lamar Lyons was there on the coverage. I mentioned, John, that they're a slow-starting offense. I didn't mean this slow. This is just their second offensive play. Well, the thing UCLA likes, too, is uh, the, the scheme so far for them this year, at least the pattern has been the defense gets the turnover, sets up good field position, the offense capitalizes on it. But so far today, the exact opposite has happened, and they're going to have to just drive the football against this Husky defense. It looks like uh, Washington got rid of all their turnovers last week against Cal. Well, Darren Washington, Sharman Shaw both out for this game, so Ricky Davis, the man right there, the senior from Houston, Texas, the ball carrier, and... Uh, He's got the first down. Lamar Lyons came up from his free safety spot to uh, make the tackle. And uh, Terry Donahue's been in a situation uh, before this year. A couple of close games early on with Cal. They got behind early, staged to come back late. But he was looking forward to this yeah, game. He... This game was supposed to be a barometer for how far this UCLA team has come. And certainly it's early in the game, but I'm sure he's not very pleased with the events as, they, as they've unfolded so far today. And I think he felt they had some pretty good practices as the inside handoff goes to Ricky Davis. Hillary Butler, number 45, was there to make the tackle. Davis uh, comes into this game with just 12 carries and 54 yards for a touchdown. I mean, he was all the way down about fourth on the depth chart this year because Darren Washington, Shaman Shaw, Derek Ayers, and then the freshman Skip Hicks. But fortunately for UCLA, a tailback has been their deepest position. And they've got a lot of injuries there. Shaw is out for the year with uh, knee surgery. As they'll go to the shotgun now on second down and seven. <laughs> Cook looking down the middle. Now he comes near side. He overthrows Stokes. Looked like that time he was trying to find his tight end, Brian Allen, down the middle. And looked over to uh, Stokes and overthrew him. Want to remind you, next Saturday, ABC Sports will present some exciting regional action. A lot of you will see Illinois take on Michigan. Plus, out of the... That's all next Saturday here on ABC Sports. Third down and seven. Allen, the tight end, will come to the near side. Three wide receivers. As Cook, down the middle, intercepted. Picked off by Lamar Lyons on the deflection. The intended receiver was Mike Wynn and Lamar Lyons with his first interception of the year, and that stops the streak of Wayne Cook. He had not been intercepted since the first game of the year. Well, the Huskies play a roll-up zone. They're dropping everybody back in coverage. Wayne Cook looks left, comes back right. He's got a ball available to, to win, and win was open there momentarily, but by the time the ball was thrown... Uh, the defender had driven the football, and that's how Kirkpatrick made the interception. And the heat on Wayne Cook there as a 75 to Marco Farr got to him. So 86 consecutive passes without an INT, and it finally happened as Heward. Goal near side. Bruner makes the catch, and Bruner still on his feet. They say no, he was out at the 25-yard line. That pass was nearly picked off. 14 yards on the reception. You're right, Marvin Goodwin almost oh. had a shot at that football, read the pattern, and made a play on the football, but Bruner is such a big target. Damon Heward knows how to use him. It's reminiscent of the touchdown reception last week against Cal, just a flat pattern. Now watch Goodwin recognize it, number 22. He drives the football, but he can't get there because the ball is thrown too high. The Bruner shows his power and speed as he bursts down the sideline and just steps out of bounds. That's Bruner's 20th reception of the year, and first and 10 from the 24. It's been all Washington as fullback Matt Jones gets a handoff, and Jameer Miller with the stick. This has been a very aggressive, it's a very athletic, uh, John, UCLA defense. They've got 21 sacks so far this year. Not that they're that big, but they're real quick and they're real aggressive. And look at the total yards number, Washington with 129, the UCLA 17. And don't you get a sense that the momentum that was created from that come-from-behind win last week Absolutely. against Cal is carrying over to this game? How confident is Damon Heward and this offense look so far today? Absolutely. Three wide receivers all split to the top of your screen on second and seven from the 21. Heward looking to McCarthy, and the pass incomplete. 
at the 15-yard line. The intended receiver was D.J. McCarthy, who uh, caught that 29-yard uh, touchdown pass to uh, pull Washington to within uh, six last week. You know, the Kosey other thing, Littleton was the uh, the man on the coverage. The there. other thing about these receivers, at least the wide receivers for the Huskies, is that none of them have double-figure receptions yet. And when Jason Shelley went out uh, with the suspension for the year, he had 17 receptions, and the other entire wide receiving core had 16 receptions. So, but they're stepping up and starting to play a lot better football. Third down and seven, 21-yard line. Ward near side. He's got the Ron Hill. Hill still on his feet before he's dragged out at the 11-yard line. Paul Gidry, the right side cornerback, the redshirt freshman, came up to make the tackle, and that's enough for the first down for the Huskies of the University of Washington. These are really coming into this game, John, two evenly balanced teams. They are. The uh, scoring offense uh, for UCLA, 37-2, Washington 38. That's number two and number three, and points allowed just the opposite. Washington at 15, UCLA at 18-6. That ranks number two and three in the Pac-10. Oh, so far, I'd say UCLA has done the giving. UCLA came into the game allowing only two rushing touchdowns this year as Kralik goes in motion on a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Kaufman on the left side and just trying to follow people as uh, best he can. UCLA did a terrific job that time to spread it out. Matt Werner, uh, the right defensive tackle, was the guy who was initially in there on the contact. They did. They really balled everything up and never gave him a lane to run in, in the short side of the football field. Uh, John, uh, when you played football, uh, you know the programs and uh, how they list your height and your weight. Now, how much tonnage did they put on you? I mean, what did what did you... It's usually 10 I, or 15 pounds. I can take care of all the tonnage myself, Roger. <laughs> I, I didn't have to put any on for me. Well, Case weighs 245, Stretch 267, and Warner 265. And i got to believe those numbers are pumped up a little bit. I'm sure they are, especially in George Case's... Uh, Case, who's 6'2", 255 as a sophomore, and uh, they call him Psycho. Second and goal from the eight on the option, Kaufman, and he gets down to the five-yard line. Heward can give you that option look, which makes uh, things even more difficult for UCLA to defend. And Washington, they have been tough down in the red zone, inside the 20. They've scored on 20 of 23 possessions, 12 touchdowns and six field goals. And uh, they've been very balanced, John, coming into this game. Uh, they've had nine rushing touchdowns and nine passing touchdowns and one on a return. And so they've uh, added to that so far today. Third and goal from the four-yard line. Jim Lambright, who is the uh, head coach and also still the defensive coordinator. Kaufman fumbles. UCLA's got it. UCLA's got it. Donovan Gallatin came up with the fumble recovery, but the stick put on Napoleon Kaufman that knocked it loose. Looked like George Case was the man. I believe it was. It was a great penetration up the middle. Kaufman could barely get the hand off. George Case, the nose tackle. And so with 4.49 to go, first quarter, Washington leads it 15 to nothing. Let's go to New York right now. Roger. Thanks, John. And the uh, first play run by UCLA after recovering that fumble in a uh, exciting sequence there, a gain of uh, a couple as the uh, the hit was made by Case and the fumble recovery by Donovan Gallatin. And uh, let's take a look at it here. Right up the middle, let's watch George Case, number 59, as he is able to get through and get his helmet right on the football. And there's Donovan Gallatin, who had a key turnover last week in the early part of the BYU game. But this is a second turnover deep in UCLA territory for the Huskies. Second and eight from the five-yard line. Cook's been under constant pressure, and he's sacked. 45, Hillary Butler was the man that pulled him down, a senior from Tacoma, Washington. Watch Butler, number 45. He's the inside linebacker, and obviously Jim Lambright felt like he could bring some pressure. He, he pretty much predicted that UCLA was going to throw the ball in this situation, and he guessed right. Cook did all he could just to get out of the end zone and avoid another safety. Second sack of the year for Butler. Hey, John, their field position, UCLA from the one-foot line, the 11-yard line, and the three-yard line. <laughs> back it up. Get it back. Out of the shotgun. On third and nine. Handoff up the middle, and Milliner will get across the five to the six and just give him a little room to punt the football. Scott Greenlaw, number 12, and Lawyer Malloy, number nine, 
in there. Of course, Green lost the guy last week to recover the onside kick. That's right. He was the hero, and he was one of the guys that's just supposed to go down and block somebody for Cal, and the ball wound up rolling right underneath him, and that's what led to the recovery and the touchdown that uh, won the game for the Huskies against Cal last week. Darren Shager in the back of his end zone, and uh, Bino Bryant at about his 43-yard line, so Washington should get good field position once again. They lead it 15 to nothing, and Shager barely gets it off. Fair catch called by Bryant, and he makes it at the 43-yard line. So 2.39 to go first quarter, and it's been all Huskies here in Pasadena. Along with John Spagnola, I'm Roger Twibell. Four turnovers so far in the game, and Washington has a 15 to nothing lead over UCLA, and the game has been played in the UCLA end so far with 2.39 to go first quarter. Damon Hewitt will hand it to number 11, Bino Bryant, and James, or excuse me, Jameer Miller, 95, came over to make the tackle, maybe a gain of one. Well, you see the Huskies offensively, they've had success running at Miller, and when you have a guy who's so quick and plays in the backfield as Miller does, you're a lot more successful running at him. You can see how he was able to run the play down from the backside, but he's not that big a guy, and if you put a tackle on him, or you pull a guard, or use a lead back to block him, uh, he's not as effective. Well, one of the things that uh, Washington's had trouble with this year, they came into the game with 17 fumbles, having lost seven. Now it's 19 fumbles, and they've lost nine on a second and 10 from the 43. Heward is nailed. Man, he took a shot, and Kosey Littleton had him wide open, and just as he released the football, put a big hit on him. And... Uh, uh, Cozy Littleton is one of two players who started every game last year for the Bruins, the other one being Marvin Goodwin. But he's a guy that specializes in blitzing, and once he sees the quarterback out of the pocket, he puts a monster hit on Heward, who was just throwing the ball away. Probably should have done it a little sooner. That was right on his right shoulder, too. Huskies 2 of 4 in third down situations. They've got it third and 10 from the 43 yard line. Bino Bryant, and inside the 40 to the 39, and that'll bring up a fourth down situation. Grady Stretz, number 77, and Marvin Goodwin, number 22. Goodman, a junior from Camden, New Jersey. And the Bruin faithful are giving their defense a hand as they greatly needed to hold the Huskies there and keep them out of field goal range, and that's just what they did. John Wardell will come in to punt it on a fourth down and five. As he stands uh, back at his 45-yard line. And Paul Guidry, number 12, is standing at the 10. Andy Colbert, who plays both on kick return and for punt return teams on a high snap, is injured and not playing today. So Guidry will let that thing go. Man, it looks like Washington's down it inside the yard line. <laughs> Just when you thought that UCLA might get some breathing room. Great job by the special teams of Washington as Wardell gets his seventh punt inside the 20 this year. And Leif Johnson, who's the main man, has eight tackles on the special teams, gets down there to down it. Watch the end of the punt. UCLA's starting position so far in this game has been their own nine-yard line. And it's actually going to be decreased a little bit here now. Probably the average starting position is going to be their own five-yard line. That's a hard way to operate your offense. I don't know if NFL teams ever draft guys just to play on special teams, but Johnson is one they might want to look at. He does a terrific job. Cook trying to throw out of the end zone, and he finds Kevin Jordan. And Jordan gets him out to the nine-yard line. Russell Harrison, 26, and Lamar Lyons, 25. We're there to bring him down. We have a banged-up player for the Huskies in the field. Jim Lambright, Lambright rather, brought the blitz again that time as I saw Lewis Jones, uh, number one, who plays safety for the Huskies, coming on a blitz. So they're, they're trying to play a pressure defense here deep in the territory. All right now, let's send it to New York and John Snodgers. John? That's one of the teams uh, Gary Gibbs has yet to beat. You know, he's 0-3-1 and and yep. against uh, Colorado. He's able to beat Texas this year for the first time, but at Oklahoma, you have to beat Texas, and you have to beat Colorado, and you have to beat, Nebraska. Have to beat Nebraska. DeMarco Farr is the uh, injured player for the University of Washington, senior from San Pablo, California. Looked like the uh, right knee, the uh, trainer, team doctor, were out there taking a look at. Let's watch DeMarco Farr, number 75, in the center of the screen. 
He reads the play as he starts on a slant to the right, and it looks like his left knee buckles, doesn't it? As he tries to, you know, many times when you have your cleat implanted in the ground as he did, and you try and change direction, you can twist a knee or an ankle. It doesn't look like he's too seriously hurt as he's walking off the field unassisted with a little bit of a limp. Well, Cedric White will come in to replace him, number 95. And UCLA, 46 seconds to go. First quarter, second down and two from the nine-yard line. Trying to get a first down, trying to get a little breathing room, and not much going right there as Jamal Fontaine came in quickly to uh, make the tackle. This is a UCLA football team that last year struggled offensively, scored uh, just 23 touchdowns all year. So far this year, they have scored 23 touchdowns. So they have improved the offense, but they're a little bit banged up on the offensive line and at running back right now. I think it's also an indication of just how bad they were last year, having gone through three starting quarterbacks and winding up with John Barnes starting for them at the end of the year. They just couldn't put points on the board. On a third down and one, time running out in the first quarter. Penalty marker goes down. That's the first flag today. Looked like Skip Hicks, the uh, freshman from Wichita Falls, Texas, who had the great game against Nebraska, getting the call. Hillary Butler right there, 45 to... Uh, make the tackle. This has been a productive inside linebacking core for Washington between Springstead and uh, Butler. They've combined for 62 tackles this year. And they both have 31 each. Yeah. Coming in the Illegal game. procedure. Offense. Six men on the line. Five yard penalty. Repeat third down. How often have you heard, uh, John, when a team, you know, feels like maybe they've had a pretty good week of work and this is a game and they just come out and they just can't do anything right? They were very excited. UCLA was about their practices this week. They felt like they had taken their practice sessions to a new level. But uh, oftentimes what you do on the practice field does not necessarily transfer into the game. Well, there's no time on the clock. And the officials. Penalty on the play will have an untimed down. So there'll be an untimed down. So this is one of those moments in life when time stands still. 68 Vaughn Parker there, the 300-pound right tackle from Buffalo, New York, who's a looming All-America candidate. Third down and six from the five-yard line. UCLA has had absolutely no breathing room so far today. And Cook to Stokes. Stokes is in the open. A foot race. Jay, Jay Stokes. 95 yards for the touchdown. Wow. That is his ninth touchdown reception of the year. And this man averages a touchdown every three times he catches the football. He's six, four and a half, and he can run, and he uses his angular body to position himself well. What a move. And unlike so oh. many people of his size, he's got the breakaway speed to go with it. Russell Harrison was the man who had the last chance at him, and Stokes has now caught 13 touchdown passes in the last eight games. He has been on fire. That's his ninth of the year, and 11 is the single-season record held by Sean LaChapelle. And he might break that today. And he might break that today. <laughs> Bjorn Merton to attempt the point after. And it's good. And what do you think about that, folks? That's the end of the first quarter. Washington leads UCLA 15 to 7. Looking at the biggest kick return man in college football, 6'4, 270 pound Prince Arthur Emerson with four kickoff returns for 48 yards. And he gets them because they're afraid to kick deep to Bryant or Kaufman. And the good deep kick right there, and Bryant will down it in the end zone. And as we move from Prince Arthur, a UCLA record 95-yard touchdown right. pass. As usually is the case, uh, this is a play that was very successful last week against BYU. And this is something that J.J. Stokes will pre-program. He'll say, I ran slant routes last week. This week, I know Reggie Reeser, number four, who's covering me, is going to try and take it away. And this is the longest UCLA reception in history, 95 yards. That broke a 60-year-old record. And uh, last year, Stokes had a 90-yard touchdown reception. He's averaging over 23 yards per touchdown reception this year, and that'll make it even bigger. And on first and 10, first play of the second quarter, Robert Gamble 
a senior from Overland Park, Kansas, who was there to make the stick and break up the pass intended for Bjornsson. And Robert Gamble, the senior, as you said, plays this as an experienced corner would. He reads the pattern. He read the drop of the quarterback. When he saw Damon Hewitt took three-step drop, he knew that the receiver was going to hitch in front of him, and that's what gave him the ability to drive. Now, you're Washington. You're saying, let's try a three-step. Let's pump fake, and let's go deep on Robert Gamble. That was Bornson, the backup quarterback, who's playing wide receiver today on second and 10 from the 20. Right up the middle, and nothing there for Pino Bryan. And this is a fired-up Bruins defense as we go to New York and John Saunders. It's long, but not as long as the one we just had here. Not for Mr. J.J. Stokes, who is emerging as the best wide receiver in UCLA history, and there's been a bunch of good ones here. Third down and seven, 23-yard line. Hill and Kralik, the wide receivers. Ewer. Throws the near side. Conwell, the intended receiver. Washington is yelling, how about a flag? Gamble there on the coverage. Guy from the hometown right down the street from where I live. Overland Park, Kansas. Attended Rockhurst High School there. A veteran cornerback as Damon Heward. Now, you can tell the momentum, the intensity of that UCLA defense that time. They stepped it up a notch. Back to punt, John Wardell inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. Gidry back to return for UCLA. And what a turnaround. One big play can make. And Gidry try to find a wall to the outside. Gidry inside the 40 to the 36-yard line. And UCLA with their best field position of the day. Richard Thomas was over there to make the tackle for the Huskies of Washington. Gamble came up with two very big plays on that last series of downs for the UCLA defense. He's a senior. He didn't get the start today, but he does see a lot of playing time, and he's only one of the two seniors in that secondary for UCLA. But that series belonged to him, and as a result of that, uh, UCLA enjoys their best field position of the afternoon. They've got it first and 10, 37-yard line. The Bruins have rushed for 846 yards in their last three games, but they're hurting the tailback. And Cook will go to the air. The intended receiver, Kevin Jordan, and it's overthrown. The coverage by Reggie Reeser, the man that was burned there by J.J. Stokes, as we take a look at the first quarter statistics. Well, on the strength of that uh, touchdown pass, the very last play of the first quarter, the total yards look pretty even. 153 for the Washington, 125. Turnovers are even, and the time of possession is very close as Washington has a 15-7 lead. Second and 10 from the 37. Both receivers split to the near side as Cook will check off at the line of scrimmage, and that'll split his backs, Milliner and Hicks. On the delay, watch this young man, the true freshman, Skip Hicks. He's been bothered by an ankle injury. Lawyer Malloy will come up to make the tackle, but Hicks had the huge game against Nebraska uh, before having to leave at the beginning of the fourth quarter, had rushed for over 140 yards in that game. And I don't know whose foul up that was, Hicks or the quarterback, but it seemed like the exchange, the mesh point where the handoff occurs, was uh, not as smooth as I'm sure the UCLA offense would like it. Third down and six from the 33-yard line. Out of the shotgun. The blitz, Stokes has got it. He's trying to get to the first down markers, and Josh Moore was over there. I'll tell you what, Moore from Torrance, California, must have done some uh, calf roping in his days because he got him right up there around the head and That's just right. turned him straight down. One of the things Stokes does so well, though, particularly around the end zone, he did it last week against BYU on one of his three touchdown receptions, is when he sees a first down marker or the touchdown uh, end zone line, he's able to extend those long arms and get the first down. But as you said, Moore wrestled him to the ground, and it looks to me like the Bruins are going to go for it on fourth down. Why not? Trailing by eight, 12.32 to go first half. On the left side, Hicks spins, doesn't get it. Stood up, Lawyer Malloy, the first man to him, number nine, the redshirt freshman from Tacoma. 
And Hicks maybe got it a little bit too far outside that time. Watch this play as Hicks gets the ball. Now he's got some room right here, but out of nowhere comes number nine, Lawyer Malloy. Hicks never saw him because he was behind the offense and defensive line. Malloy came through, filled the hole beautifully, and as a result of that, the Huskies take over the football. I'll tell you, John, I still like the call, though. Early in the game, you sure. know, you've got a little momentum back. Go ahead and go for it. Your defense is fired up now. The difficult thing is Hicks hasn't played for a number of weeks. That's right. And on a short yardage situation, he may have been a little bit more adept at just getting the ball and getting to that first down marker. It looked like he was a little hesitant getting through the hole. Kralik's in motion, first and 10, 29 yard line for the Huskies. As Napoleon Kaufman tries the right side and not much there as Jameer Miller, 95, came over to make the stop in this, uh, the University of Washington defense we're looking at right now. Ninth in total defense, fourth in rushing defense, and 17th in scoring defense. And the UCLA Bruins also very strong defensively this year. And those are national rankings, and they are playing very good defensive football. It's an aggressive defensive front and an de uh, aggressive scheme that Jim Lambright employs. Second down and seven from the 32. Hewer checks off at the line of scrimmage, and Pitches it to Kaufman. Kaufman's got some room to the outside, and he's driven out of bounds. The man over there, Teddy Lawrence, number two. And, John, we've seen Hewer check off a couple of times today, and it seems like every time he does, they go to the option. Well, you should be able to option when you have a, a player of Kaufman's ability who can get to the outside and has world-class speed. Uh, we're looking right there at Napoleon Kaufman, uh, and there's no question that when he gets the football, a lot of exciting things can happen as he's off to a very good start so far in today's game. These two teams have played uh, awfully close through the years. The last three games have been decided by 11 points. UCLA has won three of the last four on first and 10. The pass to the far side to Ron Hill is gathered up by three players over there, including Travis Collier, number 10, and Robert Gamble. And want to remind you, Monday night on ABC Sports, uh, the Los Angeles Raiders are back in the hunt in the AFC West, and they'll go to the Mile High City to take on their arch rival, the Denver Broncos and John Elway. That all begins at 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain on ABC's Monday Night Football, and we ran into an old Raider at dinner the other night. That's right. Bob Chandler bumped into us at dinner. He does radio for the Raiders and told us Hostel will be back starting again this week up there in Mile High Stadium. Always a good game, AFC West matchup. Second and six, 48-yard line. Second man through the handoff and very close to the first down. Thomas was the ball carrier, sophomore Richard Thomas from uh, Kent, Washington. They don't, uh, John, the Huskies use their fullback much in their offense. Uh, between uh, Thomas and Jones, uh, not even 30 carries between them this year coming into the game. No, that's right. They're basically blockers. And when you have people of the ability of Kaufman and Bryant, you have to. How about Thomas, though? A couple weeks ago, he got his start. Jose State, yeah, yeah, his wife had a baby got, in the game. Got uh, his first touchdown. Got his first touchdown. There's a lot to happen in one day. day. And what did the coaches tell us? They said he's spending a lot more time in film study. Yeah. Absolutely. It's because his baby's yeah. keeping him awake, but uh, he's a very happy young man. And less time in diaper study. <laughs> First and 10, 47-yard line for the Huskies. Napoleon Kaufman trying to find some room. Gets about four yards. Coming up for the tackle, Marvin Goodwin, the strong safety. Marvin's a guy that's played free safety before, has uh, been moved over to strong safety. 31 tackles uh, on the year. A couple of fumble recoveries, two interceptions. This is a good, aggressive, strong secondary for UCLA between Greenwood and Goodwin, Teddy Lawrence. And then their backups. You know, you got guys like Donovan Gallatin, Robert Gamble. They've always been a strong team, especially in the secondary. I mean, UCLA cranks Through out the years, yeah. great players Kenny in the Easley. NFL year in and year out from that safety position. Second and six. The handoff to Pino Bryant. And Bryant with some room to the outside. He's got the first down. Bryant inside the 35 to the 32-yard line. So Bino Bryant, the senior from here in Los Angeles, 11 yards on the pickup. And Donnie Edwards made the tackle. And this has been a tough year for him as... Well, Bino Bryant is a very gifted running back. Watch Joe Kralik. You'll see him on the right side, number nine. In order for a player to bounce the football outside, watch how long he has to stay on his block. Doesn't have to be very physical, but in order for running backs to get first downs and to make big runs, those wide receivers have to stay on their blocks, and they have to do it an awfully long time. I was going to mention this has been tough for him this year because Napoleon Kaufman has sort of moved to the forefront in the running back position. As on the first down, right up the middle, 
Matt Jones with the carry. Not much given right there. 9.33 left to go first half. Uh, it was all Washington in the first quarter until a penalty on the what appeared to be the final play of the first quarter. And they didn't end the first quarter on the penalty. So consequently, one more play for UCLA, and they went 95 yards through the air as the rushing yards so far today, Washington 100 and UCLA just 14. I tell you what, you look at that UCLA defense, do you see a lot of guys with hands on their hips? That means uh, they're a little bit winded. I think Washington's been pounding them so far today. They've been on the football field a while. Second and eight. Hewitt on the straight drop back. will go right up the middle now. And Damon Hewitt puts his nose down, gets to the 25-yard line. Gain of about five on the play. In Kosey Littleton, 54, and Donnie Edwards, 23, there on the tackle. And that'll bring up a third down situation. So far this year, Washington just 36% on third down situations. As this UCLA defense is giving you the John Spagnola hand on hips <laughs> drill. You were tired. There's Bob Field, the defensive coordinator. Uh, you were tired. You know that because you were tired a lot as a player. I, I can you? recognize the you tired athlete. You, can, yes, you so. can recognize fatigue Thanks in any way. Third down and three. Ninth play of this drive from the 25-yard line. Hewitt on the rollout. On the run. <laughs> overthrown. He had two receivers, yeah, John, in the same area over there. Was that a, a, a miscue or just one guy deep coming back to the ball? Not really. The timing of the pattern. I believe Hewitt wanted to get rid of the ball. The play was designed to throw the ball sooner than he did. And by the time the receivers uh, make their patterns, make their routes. See, right now, it's actually an out and up by... Uh, Number nine looks like Kralik over there, and I think he may have gotten into the territory of number three, Theron Hill. It looked to me like Heward wanted to go to Theron Hill all the way, and maybe Kralik was thinking he'd get open on his own. 42-yarder for Travis Hansen, who is 0 for 4 from outside of 40 yards this year, 5 of 10 on the year. Bjornsson to hold. It's got the distance, and it's good. So for the first time this year, Travis Hansen hits one from outside of 40 yards, a 42-yarder. And Washington leads it 18 to 7. Back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, along with John Spagnola. I'm Roger Twinell. Glad you could be with us. This has been an interesting game so far today as Jason Crabb will kick it off. And back deep, Teddy Lawrence will take it at the five-yard line. Lawrence gets it to the 18. The Bruins have scored 10 touchdowns now this year that have covered 30 yards or more, including two by the defense. As I want to remind you, it's time once again for our Coors Light. Jim Lambright, who is minus a coach this week. Uh, Miles Corrigan, one of his assistant coaches, uh, resting now comfortably in a Bay Area hospital after undergoing heart surgery last week. And we wish him a speedy recovery. As Cook will throw it to Jordan near side. Nice move by Jordan to elude one tackle as he gets to the 25-yard line. Gain of seven there. Russell Hairston uh, makes a tackle. So in essence, uh, Washington is really down two coaches because Lambright being named John head coach, you know, early in this season, he's playing as he's serving as defensive coordinator. That's right. It's a quick hitch. Just get the ball out in the flat. What I like about Cook is he sets his feet quickly. He opens up his hit, and he has a very strong arm as he gets the ball out to Kevin Jordan on the sidelines, but you're right, Lambright is down to the bare bones staff right now with his uh, football coaching staff. Cook, six of nine, 125 yards, the handoff up the middle, and not much going right there for Skip Hicks, who's playing on a very tender ankle. Hicks is a 6'1", 205-pound freshman from Wichita Falls, Texas, and one of the things UCLA has done awfully well today, or this year, is rush the football. You see over five yards of carry, but today, just 1.3 yards per carry. And that's the DJ. That is uh, Don James, the former head coach at Washington. All the players with that sticker on their helmets to uh, remember their former head coach on a third down and two. Cook the quick hitter to Stokes. And across the 35 to the 38-yard line, Reggie Reeser and Kilpatrick came up to make the tackle. 13 yards on the reception. Stokes fifth in the nation in scoring. There's no difference than a college uh, basketball player going for a rebound. See how Stokes gets good body position. He just walls the ball away for Reggie Reeser. As a matter of fact, Reeser wasn't even sure he had caught the football because he couldn't see the football in the air right there. He's 6'4", 215 pounds. San Diego State recruited him, wanted to make him a tight end. He said, I'm a wide receiver. <laughs> And he showed them a couple of weeks ago. First and 10, 39-yard line. Cook on the rollout. has got Stokes open. He tries that move again. A little 
little bit successful. He's able to get an extra yard or two. Josh Moore and Kilpatrick come up to make the tackle on J.J. Stokes, who has been on some kind of run. Going back to last year, including today's game, 13 touchdown receptions over his last eight games. And with nine touchdown catches this year, as John mentioned, Sean LaChapelle with the season record, 11 touchdown catches. So conceivably, he could go past that today as Ricky Davis is checked back in. Cooks hit his last four on second and one. They'll give it to Milliner, the first man through. And that's going to be very close right there to the first down. Milliner has sort of been the forgotten man in the backfield early in the year. He was recruited as a tailback but moved to fullback. Finally, with all the injuries, got his chance and has had consecutive 100 yards rushing games. But keep in mind, these were both against Western Athletic Conference teams. I mean, uh, if he played in the WAC, I guess he'd be all whack as a, as a running back. But uh, it's a much tougher Husky defense that UCLA is facing so far today. Stokes, who doesn't even need to go in the huddle, just comes to the near side on third down and one. UCLA two of six in third down situations with 5.08 to go first half. Cook downfield, the intended receiver, the tight end, Brian Allen, and Cook took a pretty good shot after releasing the football. Cook took a pretty good hit right there from Steve Springstead. He did. There's a fake toss action. It's designed to get the football downfield, but I'll tell you, J.J. Stokes was wide open, standing on the sideline as Hewitt takes a hit. It looked like sorry, he could have. He could have run. takes a hit from yeah. Springstead. It looked like he could have run for it too, John, if he was uh, so inclined. Yeah, that was a tough pass to throw. He had to feather it in there. Shager back at the 31-yard line to punt it. Bino Bryant nearing the 1,000-yard mark in career return yardage to bring it back. Left-footed punter sends a nice spiral down. Bryant, the fair catch inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. So UCLA has Washington backed up after the 44-yard punt by Darren Shager. On ABC Sports. They probably played more courses than uh, Spagnola's played recently. I can tell you that from the looks of his golf swing. You call it play, you're being generous. <laughs> First and ten from the nine-yard line for the uh, Huskies as Napoleon Kaufman tries the right side and gets about three yards. Damon Heward, the young quarterback, we talked to him about the adversity of this season for Washington. He's been through so much, and and to, to play like we are at a championship level, I think it says something special about this team. You know, we're not pulling up our tents and going home. We're playing football on Saturdays. Damon Heward started four or five for 76 yards. Since then, he is two of seven for 18 yards. On a second and six, he'll hand it to Kaufman. And Kaufman's got nothing going on the left side. Jameer Miller, 95, was the man that flipped him up as George Case and Matt Werner are out front. Some good penetration to set up the tackle by Miller. Well, you know, just relating back to Heward's comments, I mean, I have to agree with him that definitely you know, this Husky team is a very proud team. They've been to three Rose Bowls. They've won a national championship. And when you know you're playing for nothing, I mean, I, I just admire the way they've been able to hang together, to be able to win a game last week in the last couple of seconds. And, and they are on a mission to try and knock off every Pac-10 team they can this year. Third down and six from the 13-yard line. Washington just two of seven in third down situations. And Kaufman, who has two fumbles today, had a pass right in his hands and a lot of green grass in front of him, and he dropped the football. Kaufman came into this game with just 11 receptions coming out of the backfield. And so a good opportunity there for Washington to move out of a hole, but that'll bring up a punting situation for John Wardell, the senior from Bakersfield, California. There are 26 players on the Washington roster from the state of California. Gidry back deep at midfield to receive the punt on fourth and six. And a fair catch called by Gidry at the 47-yard line. 3.24 to go first half. The Huskies lead the Bruins 18-7. First and 10, 47-yard line for the Bruins of UCLA. Ricky Davis and James Milliner in the backfield with 3.24 to go first half. Washington showing blitz from the outside. Cook with plenty of time down the middle. Got his tight end, Brian Allen. And that's enough for the first down inside the 35-yard line. 
He'll come back and actually mark it at the 36. 11 yards on the pickup. Allen, the senior from Valencia. Good protection by uh, the UCLA offensive line. He's played pretty well in the pass protection so far today. Cook is able to look all over the field, and his tight end settles in the zone. Brian Allen gets his knee on the ground, and that's why the ball was brought back to that spot. That Allen still was enough for a first down. Allen missed the uh, first couple of games this year because of a knee injury. Came back against Stanford. That's just his sixth reception of the year, and they really missed him early on. First and 10, 35-yard line. Cook going quickly to the outside. And the reception made by Kevin Jordan, the sophomore from Beltsville, Maryland. Lewis Jones, number one, was there on the tackle. Just another hitch pattern. Good protection up front again. And Jordan is just going to take advantage of the fact that uh, number one, Lewis Jones, can't get to the flat as quickly as he'd like. Jordan is also a tall target and a good receiver and is really emerging this year into a fine wide receiver. He's a good blocker downfield as well. Block running, second and five. Hand off up the middle, Ricky Davis. Davis inside the 20 to the 19-yard line. Russell Harrison makes the tackle. And 12 yards on the pickup, that's the best run from scrimmage today for UCLA. It is, and that means the offensive line's getting going. Vaughn Parker on the right side, Matt sinks it, opening up a pretty nice hole there, and Davis is able to take advantage of it. Ricky Davis, 5'8 and a half, 192 pounds, has seen limited action the last two years. As you take a look at Parker, 68, sinks in 73. On first and 10 from the 18-yard line, UCLA driving as we near the two-minute mark, first half. Cook, Stokes, oh, touchdown UCLA! I'll tell you what, folks, you can't ask for a better executed pass play right down the middle of a defense. Watch Stokes. We talk about body positioning and footwork. He's able to elude the defender on the bump and run cover. Watch him lay out for this football. I mean, that's as far as he can humanly stretch, and he's able not only to get his fingers on it, but pull it in for the touchdown reception. That's big time, isn't it, John? It certainly that's is. That's NFL time. And you have to credit Cook with a perfectly thrown pass as well. Merton to attempt the point after. 18 yards on that touchdown pass matches Stokes' number, and that gives him 10 on the year. Point after is good, and with 158 left to go, first half, Washington leads UCLA now by the score of 18 to 14, and it's been the Wayne Cook, J.J. Stokes show. Just that little play action passes enough. Well, the, actually, the linebackers are on a blitz, so it's no matter about the linebacker coverage. And you can see how Cook, off the play action, was able to lay the ball up in the air. Nobody could get that football but J.J. Stokes, and that's the kind of pass you want to throw in that situation. And Terry Dunahue has got to be absolutely pleased about the execution of that particular drive by the Bruins' offense. Well, you saw Donahue in his 18th season, and uh, he told us the other day what an important game this was for him. We give them a barometer on the rest of the year, and we want to remind you coming up at halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report with John Saunders. And Rick Neuheisel, his assistant, felt the same way. To take that, to go ahead and win a close game against Stanford, and then hammer San Diego State and BYU. Now they come in against a team that's been to the Rose Bowl the last three years, can't go. Washington looks at this game as their Rose Bowl this year. And this is a huge test for UCLA. And the kickoff deep, and Cothwell will down it, and Washington will have it at the 20. And that means Prince Arthur Emerson doesn't get a yeah, chance to return gosh. to football. And He's become a local folk hero. <laughs> at least at least with us, anyway. But you're right, the crowd's now into the game. And the way UCLA started out today, you had to wonder if they were emerging as a good football team. But uh, now they're right back in this football game, trailing only by four points. Stokes has got 10 touchdown receptions in his last eight quarters of football. That's pretty good average, right? Yeah, that is just a track <laughs> meet right there for him. First and 10, 20-yard line. Three wide receivers for Washington as they'll swing it to Kaufman. Anything there? Nothing doing. He's stuffed right at the 20, but John, I like the idea of them immediately going back to him after dropping the ball in a similar play. Well, you've got to keep the confidence level high of your big play personnel, and, and certainly Kaufman is capable of making big plays. But Donnie Edwards made a, a real nice play out in the flat, waited for people to help, kept his uh, positioning defensively. 
Washington, all three timeouts. The blitz got him. Jameer Miller. Seven yards on the loss as the leading sack man for UCLA does his thing. One thing Bob Field, the defensive coordinator, told me yesterday is that there's no real star of this defense. But I'd say here's one guy who's stepping up to become a star. See, the nice thing about our defense is we all play well together, and every player takes it upon himself to make the turnover, the fumble recovery. Six tackle today for Miller. Let's watch Jameer Miller, number 95, as he just breaks right up the middle. They move him around a little bit now to take advantage of the fact that he is such a good pass rusher. And he got that strong hand on Damon Ward, and uh, all of a sudden, it's third and long. Well, the sack man has come through again. He's got now 20 and a half on his career, as the Bruins had 21 coming into the game. You know, I was I was curious in asking you, John, uh, the uh, UCLA pass defense, if you look at statistics, seems a little suspect. The opponents have gotten 70 passing first downs this year on a 63% completion ratio. Is that, is that an accurate number or an accurate reflection of what's going on? Well, the percentage ratio is high, but they've also picked off the number of passes yeah. this year. I mean, 10 so far this season. So, I mean, when you look at that and you combine that, I'd rather give up the percentage, give up maybe the swing passes to Kaufman and that sort of thing, which we've seen today. Yeah. But when you have the opportunity to catch a ball and intercept it downfield, they've certainly been uh, taking advantage of that as well. But you would call them a big play defense. That's right, with the yeah. sacks and the interceptions. That's exactly right. Third and 15 as Washington with two timeouts left trying to generate something here at the end of the first half and Hewitt nowhere oh, he is smashed oh. he was smashed by George Case 59 and Jameer Miller 95 I'll tell you one thing Hewitt didn't want to do and that was turn the football over though watch the hit this is a quarterback in the open field and everybody Ooh. gets him from different I mean that is just what defensive players live for a vulnerable quarterback in the open field and UCLA is going to have some time left on the clock when they uh, get possession of the football. UCLA's got an injured man over in that uh, huddle. One of their players on his feet but leaning over. Good decision by Heward, though. He didn't want to force the football. He's up by four. He can go into halftime. He's going to let his defense get on the field and play defense and hopefully uh, preserve that lead. Got a timeout now with 1.15. Left to go, Washington leads UCLA 18 to 14. Now welcome back after the uh, timeout by UCLA. Wordell to uh, punt it inside his five yard line. Gidry back at his own 45. 114 left to go first half and UCLA trying to get a little something else on the scoreboard as they've got two timeouts remaining and one minute and eight seconds left to go in the first half. 31-yard punt by Wardell, so they'll have good field position. Washington, John, is trying to be the spoiler this year. They uh, knocked off Stanford in the opening game of the year. Cal was unbeaten last week, knocked them off. UCLA, they've got roses in the back of their mind. Uh, the only thing is, Washington doesn't play Arizona this year, so they can't get in their way. That's right, and Arizona is the only undefeated team mm -hmm. in the Pac-10 right now. I'm sure they'd like to get their hands on them. But as I said, I just, you know, I, I very much admire the way they've been able to stay together as a football team under what I think is very adverse circumstances. First and 10, let's call it the 49-yard line. Washington showing blitz. Cook out of the shotgun will come to Stokes, and he makes the catch very close to the first down at the 41-yard line. He is just such a big target, John, and comes back to the football, can catch it high, can catch That's it low. Right. And you see a lot of times tall receivers have difficulty with the low reception, but he's able to get the pads down on the ground and secure the catch. Right at a minute, they're going to uh, they're going to now bring the chains out. They want to see if uh, if it is indeed a first down. So that's an official's timeout with uh, one minute left to go, first half, and UCLA trailing 18 to 14. We mentioned Washington will not play Arizona. They don't play him again until 1995. And this, of course, the first meeting between UCLA and Washington since 1990. Injuries have uh, been a problem. You can see that's going to come up just short. Yes, it is. Well, seven of the last eight games have been decided by seven points or less. And uh, the, uh, the history of this series has been very close. As I mentioned earlier, UCLA is the only team that uh, Don James didn't have a winning uh, percentage against in his uh, illustrious career as head coach uh, of the Huskies. 
In a conference like the Pac-10, you'll always have one team that's a nemesis of another team, and UCLA has been a nemesis to, to the Huskies over the years. Second and one, less than one, second and inches. Cooks at eight of his last nine. I think on this short yardage, they might try to go deep on this play, Jeff? It's not a bad down to try it, Roger. You'll we'll see if Homer Smith is going to try that. These three receivers to the right side. Oh, we'll hand it off. Milliner, and he gets very close to the first down, depending on the spot. Reggie Reeser and Andy Mason, number 13, uh, came up and did a good job there. That didn't fool anybody, and now it's using some of the clock as it's coming down to 35, UCLA with the two timeouts. While the officials decided whether or not to measure, the clock kept running. Now they've got a third down in less than a yard, and they're going to throw it as Cook goes down the middle, and intercepted by Mason. Intercepted by Mason. Allen had it in his hands, and Andy Mason comes up with the interception, and UCLA got a little bit cute with a running play, didn't get the first down, didn't stop the clock to get organized, and now with 17 seconds to go, Washington has the ball. Watch Brian Allen, number 86, come across. It is a safe pass to the tight end in the middle of the field. It would have been a first down, but it hits off of Brian Allen's pads, and Andy Mason is there to make the interception for the Huskies. Now, now that, what, yeah, that, that's a pass that uh, Brian Allen should have caught. I mean, I'm sure that he's very upset with the fact that he just didn't lock that pass up and not allow the thing to hit into his shoulder pads like that because those pads are hard. They're made of fiberglass, and the ball just ricochets right off them and into the hands of Andy Mason. Two timeouts up for Washington. First and 10, 43-yard line. Gives them a chance to maybe get at least three as they'll swing it out on the screen to Kaufman and a great job by the UCLA defense. Coming up to... Make the tackle for UCLA was Tommy Bennett, number eight. And they just did a terrific job of stringing out that screen pass as Washington has taken a timeout now with seven seconds left to go. This UCLA defense, John, has really picked it up here in the uh, the second quarter. They have, and it's so often the case that defense will set the tempo for the football game. I mean, this defensive front is very active for UCLA. I like the call by Hewitt. I like the call by uh, Lambright in this situation. Uh, you get the ball in a guy like Kaufman's hands on a screen pass. If he can break a tackle or two, he can get you good field position to make something happen, and you're not risking a, a pivotal turnover at this point of the, of, the first, of the first half. Never a bad call when you get it in Napoleon Kaufman's hands, huh? <laughs> Isn't it somehow coaches uh, become a lot smarter when they have players like Kaufman around? There's Donovan Gallatin. He's a, a backup, but uh, I'll tell you his number, 16 tackles, a couple of sacks, a, a fumble recovery, two interceptions, a forced fumble, and the uh, Washington huddle over there. Now, with seven seconds uh, left to go, they've got uh, one timeout left. Sure. Uh, conceivable to try to maybe try to get about a 20, 25-yard pickup, use up about five seconds, or would he just go deep this time? I think he'd just go deep. They have to get the ball beyond, let's say, around the 25-yard line. So you're talking about a pass in excess of 25 yards, actually about 29, 30 yards. So uh, there's no reason not to take a shot, at least down the middle of the field and use the timeout and set up your field goal kicker. Trips to the near side. On second and seven, Heward is going to go deep looking for Bjornsson. And it's out of bounds, and time expires in the first half. So much for all that evaluation. Yeah. Huh? Throw the ball out of bounds, and halftime's upon it. Very interesting first half of football here as Washington leads UCLA 18 to 14. from San Diego has been the man to get UCLA back into the game as we take a look at the first half statistics. John, time of possession fairly even as is total yards. Well, look at the rushing yardage. Uh, Washington has a balanced offensive attack. UCLA only able to garner 27 yards rushing but 191 yards passing and as you said the total yards are pretty even as is the score. 18 to 14. The Huskies leading here and they'll be receiving in the second half. As we are set to go, the uh, average field position in the first quarter for UCLA was the 46-yard uh, line. Well, that was for Washington, rather, as UCLA had their backs up against the wall and turned around in the uh, second quarter as Merton will send it deep, and Kaufman doesn't get much of a chance. So Merton's kickoffs have kept the uh, duo of Kaufman and Bryant from returning kicks, and Prince yeah. Arthur Emerson has not gotten his chance either. No, There's... Merton's taking advantage of the prevailing breeze, too, to get the ball up in the air and deep into the end zone for the touchbacks. So just underway. 
Second half, UCLA trying to win their fourth game in the row. Lost their first two this year and have come back with three consecutive victories, the last two over Western Athletic Conference opponents. Heward was 8 of 16, 97 yards in the first half as Kaufman will come in motion to the near side. And the handoff right up the middle and not much going there. This UCLA defense, John, has really tightened up here in the last quarter. They have played well uh, early on. I think they were really, they were suffering from bad field position, but they've been able to play well the last uh, quarter or so. And I know they like to get the ball back and, uh, and certainly stuff Washington on this initial drive in the second half. Well, it's difficult running the football in the Pac-10. Seven Pac-10 teams are in the top 20 in the nation in rushing defense. Washington is fourth in that category. And UCLA also ranked in the top 20. And we've seen it here today on second and seven. It's been tough running the football as Heward now will come near side to Kralik. And Kralik to the 28-yard line. Donnie Edwards, number 23, came up to make the tackle. So with the lone back that time, Heward showed you a little ball action. He did. Not only that, he's trying to go to Conwell again on that pattern down the middle that was successful in the first half. But Heward showing the presence, not throwing the football there, and going to his outlet on the sidelines. Nice job by Heward recognizing the coverage and knowing where his outlets are. On third down and one, they'll bring in Matt Jones at fullback. With two tight ends and Kralik, the lone wide receiver, to the top of the screen. Kaufman gets it. He didn't get it. Jameer Miller, 95, was a man that came busting through. I'll tell you what, he spends more time in the backfield of Washington than Napoleon Kaufman does. Boy, that is, that is so true, and that is what he does well. He gets the penetration, is able to trip up Kaufman. All Kaufman had to do was get to the 30-yard line, but he couldn't do it. That's the eighth tackle today for Jameer Miller. And Napoleon Kaufman's found the going rough today. He's got a couple of fumbles. He's dropped a pass wide out the open flat, which would have been a sure first down. And coming in for Washington, John Wardell, as Paul Guidry will be back at his 35-yard line to receive this punt on a fourth and one from the 29. Guidry. Trying to get it outside, trying to find a block. Not much going there as he gets to the 38-yard line. Timeout, 12.47 to go, third quarter. Dana joining uh, John and myself right now, Carl Peterson, uh, President and General Manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, a uh, former coach at UCLA, a graduate of UCLA, and, of course, uh, out here for the Chiefs-Chargers game on Sunday. And we're going to spend a few minutes with Carl right after this first down play for UCLA from the 39 as Cook comes near side. James Milliner with the catch at the 40, and Milliner turns it up across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Carl, 69 former UCLA and Washington players playing in the National Football League. I guess you and your staff spent a lot of time scouting in the Pac-10. This is a good place to be. Uh, Lynn Stiles, my vice president of uh, player personnel and a former UCLA coach also is with me today. And, you know, and I've got uh, my old tight end over here from the Philadelphia Eagles, John Spagnola. So this is home week. Second down coming up now. And three is Stokes, the lone wide receiver, and the pass broken up. Of course, a, a lot of talent out here on the field today. Uh, any of the seniors in particular that uh, you guys are looking at to, to fill a need that the Kansas City Chiefs have? Both the uh, Huskies and the Bruins have got uh, a lot of seniors and talented guys on the offense for uh, UCLA. Uh, Nowitzki and, and the uh, other tackle, number 68, are excellent. Parker, Parker are, are really fine young players that I think are going to play in the National Football League for some time. Is Nowitzki especially valuable because he plays so many positions? Carl, uh, he's played guard, he's played left tackle, he can move around. He's done all of it. Talking with Terry Donahue yesterday on the practice field, uh, he's played all five positions even this year, so it's a credit, uh, credit to him. Third and three, 46 yard line. Cook scrambling, throws to Milliner. Milliner dropped the football. Mm. He was wide open, he had the first down, and he dropped the football. He was a little bit unsure of that first reception, too. Absolutely. Yes. Well, Carl, you discovered the guy working with me here, John Spagnoli. You pulled him out of the Ivy League, and he spent 12 years in the NFL. So, He was uh, he was a great find for us, and the thing I always loved was that we finally got him at the end of training camp, and Dick Vermeil never liked to take guys at the end of training camp. He said he won't be able to learn the offense, Carl. I said, this guy will learn it. He's from the Ivy League. He's from Yale. And I didn't let you down right. either. Did no, I? no. Well, I like to say, Carl, you discovered me, but I made your career as well. <laughs> That's true. I was the finest tight end uh, coach in the National Football League because of John. <laughs> guy by the name of Keith Crefley. Darren Shager to punt it from the 30. Bino Bryant 
takes it at the 16-yard line, trapped on the side. But tell me about a guy like Bean O'Brien who had the great year a couple years ago, out with an injury, and now Kaufman's moved ahead of him as we've got a penalty marker down. But how do you look at a player like that? I mean, does he have some promise uh, in the oh, National Football Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you have to go on his uh, on his junior and sophomore years when he really did get a chance to play yeah. tremendously. You just can't uh, keep a guy like Napoleon out of the lineup. Uh, Bino should play in the National Football League and can do a lot of things like we saw, return punts as well as There's run no and catch for the football. Play. There yeah. were seven men legally on the line of scrimmage. You have a player Ball in Harvey dead. Williams. 20 yard line. Who's sort of similar background, isn't he, with injuries and not, not able to complete complete seasons at LSU? Who's, this who's is in your true. backfield? You'd yeah. just like him to complete one right now, <laughs> wouldn't you? <laughs> well, I tell you what, we like the uh, combination with he and Marcus Allen uh, in our backfield, but Harvey was the same way at LSU and uh, had some problems, but has been an excellent uh, player for us. I think uh, will become even a, a better player in the okay. years to come. Okay, Carl, we want to know right now is Montana playing Sunday? That's the question everybody <laughs> wants to know. I can uh, say on uh, national TV, yes, he is. He uh, practiced all week and looks real well. Works well. First and 10, 19 yard line for Washington. Kaufman with a seam, and he shows you that great quickness across the 25 to 26. Carl, thanks so much for being with us, and I know you guys uh, have a Monday night game against the Packers coming up in what, about three weeks? On ABC, yes, at uh, Arrowhead Stadium. It's my pleasure, it always is. And John, it's great seeing you. Thank you. And uh, I'll see you back in uh, yeah. Kansas City. Okay, good luck this Thank weekend. you, Carl. Thank you. All right. And thank you for plugging ABC there. Well done. <laughs> And when you get home, buy the pay-per-view, will you? Yes. What are you gonna... <laughs> Second and two, 27-yard line. Hill and Crayley come to the near side. Up the middle. And, John, even though that was just a, a second and short yardage uh, and they want to try to run the football, Washington's not having much success now in the middle of that, uh, that defense of UCLA. Well, I think the, the defense has become a lot more active. Uh, George Case, Matt Werner. And Grady Stretz are, are playing well. Uh, they're settled into this football game. They're active. They move to the football well. This UCLA defense is not especially fast, but they all can move to the football well. Now, is the play over here and somebody coming in and uh, the uh, blue and gold a little late? Uh, I don't know about yeah. that. No flag, no foul. First and 10, 30-yard line. Under 11 minutes to go, third quarter. Ewart looks near side, Theron Hill. What a nice tackle made right there. 22 came up. Marvin Goodwin just to get a piece of number three, Theron Hill, the sophomore from Gardena, California. And a gain of about three on that play. There's Marvin from Camden, New Jersey. UCLA really does a good job of recruiting out of the state of New Jersey, out of the state of Texas. Uh, they go back to the Washington, D.C. area and, and pick out a number of players. Sure. Vaughn Parker, their big tackle, is out of Buffalo, Buffalo New York. York. He came to the UCLA campus and hey. said, this is it for me. It's not a hard sell, is it? No, it <laughs> Buffalo to, to Westwood. <laughs> Second and six, 34 yards. this time of year. Fewer checks off at the line of scrimmage. Once again, it's the option. And this time he's able to break it through for a gain of three. So, John, that's three times that I can remember that Hewitt is checked off and then run the option as Travis Collier made the tackle, and he'll be about two yards short of the first down. But well, UCLA is playing it well. If you want somebody to beat you in the option, you definitely want the quarterback, Damon Hewitt, who isn't especially quick to run the football. And at that time, they took away all the pitch options and all the options to the running backs, and Hewitt had to carry the football himself. Washington just two of eight in third down situations. They've got a third and two at the 38-yard line. Matt Jones, Napoleon Kaufman, the running backs. And Kaufman will get it. Kaufman's got the first down. Folks, I want to tell you, Matt Jones, 22, that was either a big-time block or a big-time hold, John Spagnuolo. Absolutely. I mean, Matt, uh, I'll tell you what happened there. It's Marvin Goodwin, number 22. These are two 22s locked up, the fullback against the safety. Watch it coming on the right side of your screen right there. Now, Goodwin's going to try and get the holding call. He doesn't get the holding call. And Matt Jones just finishes the block, puts him down on the ground. And Goodwin's complaining, but Kaufman takes advantage of a good lead block by the, hey, don't try, this is not yeah. basketball. You're no, not going to draw charging fouls and everything else by raising your hands up. Washington got away with one there, no question about it. Trips to the near side and first and 10 from the 47, Kaufman in motion. Washington will throw it down the middle, and Kaufman with the reception, a gain of about seven yards that time from Damon Heward, Shane Jasper, number 90, the inside linebacker makes the tackle. But when you can see a guy like Kaufman 
Go in motion out of the backfield. Come across the middle. Catch a football like that. I mean, the pro scouts look at that and they say, this is a guy who does more than catch a pitch out of the eye formation and break it upfield. Here's a complete running back, the kind of guy that most NFL teams can use. Second down and three from the 40. Washington's got a drive put together here. 8.49 to go third quarter. Dean O'Brien had nowhere to go on the right side. 92, Matt Werner, one of the first players, and Gary Walton, who just checked into the game. 89, the sophomore from San Diego. There on the tackle. You know, UCLA's had some injury problems, John, the, uh, the last couple of years, and 26 players who started at least one game are back this year. As, there you see Walton. Right there, 89, makes the penetration. There's old number 95. You always see him in the backfield one way or the other, whether he's on his backside or standing up making the tackle. But due to injuries, they've had a lot of players who've had a chance to get in and start some games and get some experience as Bryant comes to the near side and third down and three. Heward in trouble. He's dumped. Werner, his third sack of the year. The senior from Yorba Linda. On the right side of your screen, the tight end releases, and Heward is thinking about getting the ball to him. He just runs out of time as Werner is able to exert good pressure and get to the quarterback. That is what you call a coverage sack, ladies and gentlemen. That is when the secondary does such a good job, the quarterback is forced to hold the football, and eventually the defensive linemen make the play, and Matt Werner made the play there and forced the Huskies to punt. Sixth punt for John Wardell from his 40. Paul Guidry. Waving for the Oh, what a great punt. What a great punt. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. 45 yards on the punt for Wardell. And we'll be right back. Well, you can't fault Paul Gridry for his decision here. Anything over his head at the 10-yard line, he's going to let go. But I'll tell you what, John Wardell just makes a fabulous punt inside the 20. And he's done that 28 times in his career so far. Well, 29th career punt inside that 20. This is the fourth time today UCLA has started from inside their own three-yard line. On first and 10, let's call it the two. And this time, Cook will roll out to throw the football to Stokes and through his hands, and he was hit uh -huh. after the play and a penalty marker. A penalty marker down as Stokes was out of bounds, and he took a shot to the head. Lawyer Malloy was the man that nailed him. That's a good play and a bad play by the secondary. Good defensive coverage, but it looked to me like Lawyer Malloy got a little too aggressive. Let's watch Stokes again. He's in. He's now this bump and run coverage, so he has to get around Josh Moore. Moore reads the pattern, turns his head in time, and tips the ball. It doesn't tip the ball, but right here you see a relaxed receiver, and Lawyer Malloy hits him out of bounds, and that's a personal foul. So that gets UCLA out of a hole with 7.14 to go, third quarter. And that's just the second penalty of the game. I was thinking, this thing's moved along in a pretty good clip, hasn't it? There hasn't been all that. Especially bad. after last week up at Cal, <laughs> when we had about 30 penalties in that game. First and 10, 17 yard line. Hand off, left side to the 20 yard line, gain of about two by Ricky Davis. College football on ABC Sports brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, and the 25th Anniversary Diamond for a brilliant celebration of your loving marriage. Along with John Spagnola, I'm Roger Twibell at the Rose Bowl here in Pasadena, Washington, leading UCLA 18-14. They have led throughout this game. Jumped out to a 15-0 lead after a rash of turnovers in the opening minutes of this game. As Cook will look downfield and got his receiver. Mike Wynn, number 81, the junior from Portland, Oregon, is hit by Hillary Butler and Lamar Lyons. 15 yards on the pickup by Mike Wynn, who has uh, really had an injury plate season for UCLA. He has. He lost his job to Kevin Jordan as a result of the fact that he was injured. But on that play, Wynn did an excellent job of finding the pocket in the zone, finding the soft spot. Cook found him, and it's a first down for the Bruins. From the 36-yard line and out of the shotgun, Wayne Cook, four wide receivers. Now 
Allen wide open down the middle. Brian Allen, the tight end, hard to bring down as he gets the first down to the 47-yard line. Andy Mason, Hillary Butler are there, 12 yards on the pickup as the senior from Valencia, California, Brian Allen with his seventh reception of the year. Notice the pass protection. Unless Washington brings the blitz lately in this game, they haven't been able to exert much pressure. Allen gets open down the middle. This time he holds on to the football and is able to get a first down. But I like the, the, the protection that's afforded to Wayne Cook by his offensive line so far. In order to bring pressure, it seems to me like the Huskies have to bring the blitz. John, he's getting used to catching those wide open passes. He's been wide open. Now, a timeout. Cook has called a timeout. A player came running onto the field at the last moment. Avery Anderson, number 82, tried to get on the field so a timeout 544 to go third and we'll go to New York and John Saunders thank you very much John man has he done a job at Auburn you know they play Alabama at Auburn this year and of course no television for Auburn this year because of uh, uh, probation he has done a fabulous wow. job so after the best start in years for Auburn University well, uh, Monday night, uh, it'll be the Broncos and the Raiders uh, from Mile High Stadium in Denver, Colorado, uh, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific. Uh, John, who do you like in that one? Am I allowed to handicap here? I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, uh, I'll tell you one thing. The Broncos are always tough in Mile High, and even though the Raiders have that great Monday night record, I think the, uh, the Broncos are the better team right now. There's a comparison of quarterbacks so far today. Cook uh, with a, a couple of interceptions, uh, but uh, he's had a deflection. Yours definitely doing a little better in the there's turnover department than he did last week. I know on the one uh, pass uh, there, right before the end of the first half, there was a, uh, a deflection. I remember if the other one was a deflection also. Well, the one was off Brian Allen. Uh, yeah. right, right off his pad. Yeah. You'd have to call that a deflection. Yeah. First down and 10 after the timeout by UCLA. 48-yard line. Ricky Davis wide open hole. Davis the first down as he gets to the 40-yard line. And Lewis Jones make the tackle. 12 yards on the pickup. And what happened there? You know, one of the things I want you to notice is watch how the quarterback extends the football so that the whole defense can see it. And what you get from that is that really sets up the play action. Ricky Davis does a great field, job of getting open in the open field. Look uh, at but this. But he is limping off the field. And it, I'll tell you, to be a Bruin running back means you're going to get hurt somewhere along the way. Darren Washington's out with an ankle. Sharman Shaw had arthroscopic surgery on his knee this week. He's out. Skip Hicks is playing, trying to play on a bad ankle. The only other back they've got left is Derek Ayers, a redshirt freshman from Bellflower, California. So Milliner's going to have to carry more of the load as the running back situation for UCLA is becoming very precarious. First and 10, 40-yard line of Washington for the Bruins. Cook running out of trouble now just leans ahead as he gets inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. He had a couple of people open over on the far side of the field and couldn't pick them up as Cook kind of shakes his head. You know what it's great to see? We were talking about this last week at Berkeley with the artificial turf, the grass stains on the uniforms. And it is, I'll tell you it? what, I saw Damon Heward's elbows and hands this week from burns on that turf. It's unbelievable. The sooner they can get rid of that stuff, the better. This is the best field you'll ever this play on college or pro. absolutely gorgeous. Second and nine. The fake pass and the handoff. Skip Hicks. Hicks inside the 30 to the 28-yard line, and that's a UCLA first down. Reggie Reeser. Scott Greenlaw make the tackle, and there is a good-looking freshman running back. This is the UCLA version, kind of a Statue of Liberty look, a little play-action pass. Throws, I mean, doesn't actually throw the football, but makes it look that way, and he sets up the draw. Doesn't Hicks just glide yeah. as a running back? You get the feeling that he's patient. He knows where the hole is going to develop, and then all of a sudden he's able to find the opening. He has fabulous speed, and is a true freshman. They are excited about this football player. See the lights on at the Rose Bowl. Uh, rain has been predicted for most of the day. Had some showers earlier this morning as Derek Ayers checks in, and uh, he'll go in motion right now on first and 10 from the 28-yard line. Cook with plenty of time. Now he finally throws to Stokes. And Stokes trying to get a couple of extra yards is tripped up at the 23. Richie Chambers, number 32, was there to make the tackle. Looked like he wanted to hit Ayers, who was in motion and going to the deep corner of the end zone. You're right. He also, he did take a look, but he had Brian Allen open in the middle of the field, the tight end. 
And once again, I mean, Demetrius Devers, number 43 for Washington, finally got to Cook, but it wasn't after a long time. I mean, he had an awfully long time to scan that secondary and find his open receiver. Second and five, 335 to go. Third quarter, this has been the best drive so far today from UCLA. Started at their own three, and they'll hand it off inside to Ricky Davis, who's checked back into the game now. Jamal Fontaine made the tackle as a gain of about one on that play. Fontaine uh, was talking to you yesterday. Uh, Johnny wants your job, doesn't he? Uh, yeah, he does. Yeah. He wants to get into broadcasting. I mean, he has an engineering background, civil engineering major, and he's thinking of perhaps going to law school, but he said, uh, I'm a little interested in this broadcasting stuff. So maybe we'll get him a sideline job before the year's there out. There you go. Third and four, 22-yard line. Going quickly to Stokes, still on his feet. Touchdown, UCLA! Twenty-two yards from Cook to Stokes for the third time today, and that ties the season record of Sean LaChapelle for 11 touchdowns in one season. You've heard of triple doubles. This is a triple triple. Three touchdowns by. Stokes, I mean, it's unbelievable to see the strength he has, the speed. What a combination. I mean, he has every possible talent a wide receiver could ever have. The Orrin Merton to attempt the point after as UCLA has their first lead of the day. And it's good. 2.48 left to go, third quarter. UCLA on the 98-yard drive leads it 21-18. And a key play was when they were down at the two-yard line, and Stokes was hit late by Lawyer Malloy, and the penalty got him out of a hole, and then they moved down to score, and it's 21-18, UCLA leading Washington, as Bjorn Merton will kick it off. He uh, leads the nation in field goals. He's leading the nation right now and getting kicks into the end zone and not being returned. I'll tell you that. Kaufman and and Brian haven't had a chance. Here's a dimension of J.J. Stokes we haven't seen yet today. I mean, we've seen his athleticism. We've seen his speed. Look at his strength as he absorbs the hit from Josh Moore, stays on his feet, keeps his balance, and is able to get in the end zone. And this is the J.J. Stokes show here this afternoon, ladies Ooh, and gentlemen. It's going to be hard to keep him for his senior year, don't you think? Oh, <laughs> boy, oh, boy. It's going to be... I mean, he is on a tear right now. Nine receptions, 184 yards, that season highs, three touchdowns. His Nine career touchdowns, high. his last three yeah. games. I mean, that, that, those are some impressive statistics by J.J. Stokes. And, and let's not discount Cook, the guy that's getting the ball, too. I mean, he's uh, he's come up awfully big, and now Washington finds themselves behind. 2.48 to go, third quarter is Kaufman will go in motion. First and 10, 20-yard line, and here, that's just the old quarterback draw, folks. Nothing fancy. He's still running. He's got a first down across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Robert Gamble made the tackle. And let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Roger, it's John. Boy, oh boy, it's incredible. The most the things you take for granted as an offensive coordinator can sometimes detonate on you in worse, worse situations. So Hewitt had the quarterback draw wide open that time. He got the first down, the ball at the 32. And George Case, uh, number 59, and I guess my, uh, my theory of... Uh, being over 300 pounds and leaning in a certain direction <laughs> and not being able to stop uh, has just been uh, shot in the foot. Ball. ball start, offense. Oh, George well, Case is 245, and he was leaning and couldn't regain his balance. Actually, he was drawn off sides by the uh, false start. So it's against Washington. George Case, known as Psycho, in the middle of that uh, defensive uh, line. Mild mannered, UCLA, and good I'd, student, off the field. Yeah, and head coach Terry Dunny, who said if everybody played like George Case, I'd win 10 games every year. But they uh, call that on Washington. So we're blaming Case, and he was drawn off sides on first and 15. The ball goes to number 22, Matt Jones. See, that's what Case does. He sort of lulls you into thinking he's... Uh, He's coming at you, and he got the offensive line to move. Jones, a senior from Portland, good size, 6'2", 215. The, uh, the fullback just not a big factor in this Washington offense with the likes of Napoleon Kaufman and Dino Bryant. There's a look at Case, number uh, 59. He's got a 3.5 GPA in business economics. Bright young man, and he's he, really stepped up and played some yeah, great football he, for the Bruins. He's really been an inspiration 
for him as there's the matchup with Jim Novell, the senior, the center. On second down and nine, the uh, short pass to the uh, fullback, Matt Jones. And Jones up to the 39-yard line. O'Quinn and Gamble there to make the tackle. And at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 23rd year through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. In the case of a tie, uh, our uh, Yale graduate, John Spagnola, will... Uh, Decide all tiebreakers. I think we're being led here a little bit. Is this right. a subliminal suggestion, guys? Washington, 3 of 12 in third down situations on a third and three from the 39. Kaufman, is there any room? No. UCLA's defense once again comes up huge on third down. Once the defense forced Kaufman to go laterally, they were able to keep their backside pursuit angles, keep their front side contained, and they stopped Kaufman. Carrick O'Quinn, 47 on the tackle. Watch this. Kaufman's going to get the ball. He tries to find a seam inside. He thinks about cutting the football back. There's nothing for him. When he finally does break it upfield, Carrick O'Quinn is there to make the play along with Nkozi Littleton. I got to tell you, though, Jameer Miller was the man that held up those blockers. He wasn't in on the tackle, but he forced that play into the inside. As Wardell loses the snap, and he is tackled. Back at the 30-yard line, busting through for UCLA was Ted Wokey. Tell you what, I don't know so much that he lost the handle on that as that it threw his peripheral vision he just saw so many Bruins coming at him. Let's see if he handles the snap. He does. He's ready to kick the ball. There's no He just realizes that thing's going to get blocked and it doesn't have a chance of getting off the ground. So UCLA with great field position. As we've completed three quarters, we'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. And welcome back to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, along with John Spagnola. I'm Roger Twaddle, getting set to start the final 15. And we had a uh, penalty on the uh, first play. Let's go Watch back to the second uh, guy from here. the right. Marvin Goodwin will come through. He's the one who flashes in front of the punter and forces him to pull the football down. And then number 27, Ted Wokey, is there to make the tackle. That's a big turnover for the Husky defense. Wardell's only had one block in 130 career attempts, so he didn't get that one blocked, but he had to, to eat it there. First and 15 after the penalty on UCLA. As Cook checked off the line of scrimmage, gets to Ricky Davis, who's trying to get around the left side. A penalty marker down near the uh, interior the spot carrier. of the line where the ball was snapped. Russell Harrison, the right side cornerback, came up to make the tackle. There's uh, Harrison, 26, a uh, junior from Bellevue, Washington, holding. So UCLA has started this fourth quarter with two penalties as we uh, check out the numbers uh, from the third quarter. Well, second column or second row from the bottom, you see the turnovers now. Washington with two, UCLA with three. UCLA has not been able to run the football that well with only 56 yards on the ground, and the total yards are pretty even. Well... Interesting to note the 56 yards there because the uh, Bruins rushing totals increased every week this year against Cal They had 144 against Nebraska 199 259 against Stanford 269 against San Diego State and 318 against BYU But none of those teams ranked fourth in the nation in rushing defense either. Well, I tell you Nebraska was a pretty good test for them. I can say that I, I happen to be here to do that game But you're right on the other accounts. But that was Skip Hicks's coming out party. That's wasn't right it? first in 24 So they've gone from real good field position to okay field position as tight end Brian Allen makes the reception at the 34 yard line Steve Springstead and Hillary Butler the inside backers were there to make the tackle I'll Tell you Brian Allen might want to learn to get that a little sooner when he's stretched out by those Husky defenders they're all taking shots at him as they're allowed to do by the rules, but he might lose some rib cartilage if he keeps that up. Cook came into this game completing 55% of his passes. He's had a good day throwing the football, 263 yards now, a season high on second and 14 from the 34 of Washington. In trouble, Cook eludes a tackler. Cook now will just dive forward to the 22-yard line, very close to the first down marker. But we'll send you to New York and John Saunders. Roger out. John, third down and two from the 22-yard line for UCLA. 
13-20 to go in this football game for the Rose Bowl as the Bruins lead it 21-18 and out of the shotgun Wayne Cook looking down Cook got his receiver first down Mike Wynn with the reception inside the 10-yard line Richie Chambers 32 is on the coverage but 15 yards on the pickup Let's watch Wayne Cook. This is not an easy pass to throw, and you can see how this guy is really developing into a fine quarterback. Mike Wynn will break across the middle. Wayne Cook actually rolls to his right to buy some extra time and fires the ball in beautifully to win. Let's give credit to the offensive line. Cook hasn't been sacked today. Washington came into this game with 21 sacks. Nowitzki, Stevens, Flanagan, Simpson, and Parker have done a terrific job up front. First and goal from the eight-yard line. And Cook wants to throw it. He's got Ricky Davis in the near side flat, and Davis maybe will get about a yard. Springstead, 49, and Chambers, 32, are over there on the coverage. And as we mentioned, Cook with a season high a few moments ago of 263 yards. Now 20 of 28, 279 yards, three touchdown passes, all of them to J.J. Stokes, and the two interceptions. And he is having a big time kind of day. But as you mentioned, a lot of that comes with protection. And this Bruin offensive line has only given up three sacks in the last three games. Second and goal from the seven-yard line. Milliner and Hicks, the running backs. And that's Skip Hicks trying to turn it up. And you can see he's just a little bit tentative about trying to cut on that tender ankle. Kilpatrick, 35, was the first man there for the... University of Washington, the junior from Anchorage, Alaska. Have you noticed, too, Roger, that it seems that every time Hicks has run the ball, it's been to the left? I wonder if they're trying to take advantage of the fact that that ankle is sore, make it easier for him not to cut off his bad ankle. That's a good point, John. He's come out of the game now on third and goal from the seven-yard line. Milliner, the lone setback. Stokes is to the near side. where he's got all day... He felt the pressure from behind, throws it! Oh, just off the fingertips of Mike Wynn. Kirkpatrick, Kilpatrick, excuse me, number 35 for the uh, Huskies of the University of Washington, David Kilpatrick, got a piece of it. Wayne Cook, uh, once again, he has a lot of time. He's able to scan the field and definitely steps up and eludes the one person that threatened him to make the sack. And Kilpatrick comes over, knocks the ball away. Now watch Wynn try and stretch out. He can't quite get it in his hands. You see how he'll go for the field goal. Fontaine was the man that applied the pressure. Cook felt it and got out of the way. Morton to attempt the field goal to 24 yards. He's 10 of 13 on the year and 3 of 3 between 20 and 29. And Bjorn Merton, the nation's leading field goal kicker, has his 11th of the year, and UCLA leads Washington 24-18. Leads Washington 24-18 with 11-15 left to go in the fourth quarter as Bjorn Merton gets set to kick it off. He has been most successful today, sending it deep into the end zone to avoid any run back by either Kaufman or Bryant. And this time, he's going to go with the squib style, and... It's not Prince Arthur Emerson, but tight end Mark Bruner who gets it across the 35 to the 37-yard line. I had a chance to talk to Terry Donahue. I asked him if he saw something special in this year's edition of the Bruins. We have as good an opportunity as anybody in the conference uh, to win the championship. Uh, I think it's a matter of our maturing, our developing, uh, our getting some players back. Uh, I see no reason uh, why we can't win the conference championship this year with uh, the football team that we have. And for UCLA, a big date coming up against Arizona on October 30th. It's a homecoming night game here at the Rose Bowl. Hewitt, 13 to 21, 127 yards. Uh, he comes to the near side, intercepted. Intercepted by Teddy Lawrence. And Lawrence is run out of bounds. The interception by Teddy Lawrence. His second pick of the year. Teddy Lawrence got his first pick last week against BYU. Now this is your naked pass. Watch Bruner, 85. That's his primary target. Buren can't go to him. Now he wants to go to Kralik on the sidelines, but the ball hangs in the air too long. Teddy Lawrence is there, and he steps out of bounds with his left foot, but he makes the interception first. The UCLA turnover ratio is still at plus 15. And they led the nation in that category coming in. 
Some good pressure that time put on the quarterback, Damon Heward, by Jameer Miller. The cover, I mean, the pass was not all that bad. It was just an excellent break on the ball by Teddy Lawrence. First and 10 Bruins at the 43-yard line of Washington. Wayne Cook has had all day to throw the ball, and he finds his wide receiver, Kevin Jordan. Josh Moore there on the tackle, and I'll tell you what, number 49 came in a little bit late. Steve Springstead has got a piece of him. <laughs> I think Jordan knows what it's like to be inside a washing machine. Well, tomorrow night on ABC, it's America's Funniest Hour starting at 7, 6 Central Time. Then see if Superman has met his match on Lois and Clark, the new Adventures of Superman. That could be J.J. Stokes. And fall in love all over again. Julia Roberts and Richard Gere starring Pretty Woman. Sunday night movie. That's tomorrow on ABC. First and 10, 33-yard line for UCLA. Derek Ayers has checked into the backfield as Cook checks off the line of scrimmage with 10.38 to go in this football game. Ayers inside the 15 to the 14-yard line for Derek Ayers, who last week against BYU carried the ball four times for 174 yards. I'll tell you what, his father Eddie played for UCLA back in the 70s, too, from 73 to 75. But I get the sense this offensive line is starting to take control of this football game for the Bruins. And even though they're missing some key players in that offensive line, Ogden and Christensen, I mean, everybody has stepped up and played well. And Ayers just breaks through and gets a first down. He had the big 83-yard run against BYU last week. His first. father played in the Rose Bowl in 76 as well. Well, like Ed, father, like son. Eddie might get that chance, too, as Cook checks off on first and 10 from the 14-yard line. Davis has checked in, and Cook does a good job to get rid of the football that time because a lot of pressure from DeMarco Farr, number 75, who's got 10 tackles for losses this year. I think that's a good stat, that tackles for losses. CFLs, yeah, but you can see the blitz. I mean, this is what we talked about. The, Jim Lambright realizes if he's going to bring, bring pressure, he has to do it through the blitz. And there it was successful as the rest of the line is picking up other players. DeMarco Farr gets singled up in the middle, and he's able to apply the pressure on Cook. Second attempt from the 14. Out of the shotgun. Stokes is to the near side, but they give a delay to Milliner. Milliner inside the five, down to the three-yard line, where Josh Moore and Springstead finally bringing down, and Milliner... Six foot, 215 pounder with 12 yards on the pickup. Out of the shotgun draw. Watch Milliner. He'll just take his time, let things develop. It actually looks like a draw trap as we saw Craig Nowitzki come across and traps. So it was a tackle trap from the left side, and that helped to open the hole up. That gave all the other offensive linemen the angles on their blocks. First and goal from the two, Milliner and Ricky Davis will now shift, shift back into the eye. Going to the far corner to Stokes. Wow, that would have been a great catch. Stokes is saying Reeser had a hold of him. And the official's not buying it. We mentioned Cook and uh, his UCLA Bruins teammates will be playing Arizona in a few weeks as we take a look at this again. Well, how'd you like to be Reggie Reeser on the wide side of the field? You're a cornerback and you're singled up with a guy that's already caught three touchdown passes today. But Reeser with very good coverage on that play as Stokes tried to make a one-handed catch. I mentioned Cook's dad, Ken, was captain and MVP for the Arizona Wildcats back in 62, so there'll be some mixed emotions when UCLA and Arizona hook it up this year. Second and goal from the two-yard line. Ayers has checked back in. He's got the football on the right side, and he is brought down for the loss back at the eight. Demetrius Devers, number 43, came busting through there. Looks to Liam like, like maybe Matt Sinks at number 73 was supposed to cut off Devers. Devers beat him to the to the play. Devers' uh, cousin, Gail, was a 100-meter Olympic uh, gold medal champion who competed at UCLA. As uh, Devers is getting the start today in place of Donovan Schmidt, who is out with the ankle injury. So third down and goal from the six-yard line now. Stokes will split out to the far side. And from the shotgun. Wayne Cook with Milliner next to him. Going for Stokes. Touchdown! That is a great call by Homer Smith. I'll Take advantage you. of the wide receiver, Stokes. You can run those fade patterns toward the sideline. You make it look like a fade, and then you run a slant in off the fade route. 
That's easy money right there, folks. It sure is. Right now, J.J. Stokes is starting to the sideline. Then he cuts underneath. And this is how he gets so wide open. That's a new single-season touchdown record. 12 touchdown receptions by J.J. Stokes breaks the record of 11 set by Sean LaChapelle. And 10 receptions ties his career mark. 10 for 192. And it looks like UCLA wants to go for two, and Washington's going to take a timeout with 8.42 to go. And UCLA leading now by 12, 30 to 18. We'll be back to the Rose Bowl right after this. You're Reggie Reese, sir, and you're playing cornerback on J.J. Stokes. Now, he just tried to run a fade on you before, and you think, okay, there he goes again. Nope. J.J. Stokes fakes the fade route, comes back underneath, and it's an easy touchdown for UCLA. But Cook really zipped it in there to Stokes a fourth time. Those two have hooked up today, and UCLA will go for the two-point conversion. They are 0 for 2 this year. 8.42 to go, trying to stretch the lead to 14. As Cook will go at it from out of the shotgun, and that's Ricky Davis in motion as he runs behind Stokes on the far side. Look at Cook, two-point conversion, wide open up the middle. Quarterback draw, there's nobody in the backfield. That means everybody in the secondary and linebackers have to cover somebody. That opens it up in the middle for Wayne Cook. For the look point at Terry Donahue lead the cheers on the sideline. 32-18 Bruins. is Burton. It's a high kick and it's fumbled by Bryant who now picks it up and gets it across the uh, 25 to the 26 yard. Do you see big Prince Arthur Emerson was going back trying to uh, haul it in, you know? Yeah, but when Bryant picked up the football, his knee was on the ground and that's what that's why the ball's going to be spatted, spotted back inside the 20. They're going to move it back to the 17-yard uh, line. I want to remind you, college football coming up next Saturday, Illinois, Michigan, Fresno State, BYU, also Alabama and Ole Miss. Uh, some of the games you will see, plus a Pac-10 game, so check your local listings. That's next Saturday right here on ABC Sports. As 32-18, 8.40 left to go. Remember last week the Huskies were down by 13, 23-10 with 3.47 to go, and the loose ball... Ball was just sort of popped up in the wow. air there. Mike, excuse me, number 81, that was uh, DJ, DJ McCarthy who was able to uh, pick it up. But just keep in mind that uh, Washington trailed California by 13 last week with less than four minutes to go and still I think it's just try a quick hitch type pass, but I think Ewer just lost yeah. the handle on it as he tried to deliver it out there to DJ McCarthy. He may have gotten stepped on as well, and that, and that maybe was what threw off his balance. But that, that play is not what they want to kind of run inside the 20-yard uh, line like this. Second and 10 from the 17 sack at the 10-yard line. George Case. Some might call him George Basket Case. <laughs> He's a wild man. There's a score, Washington State leading California. You can't discount the Cougars in the Pac-10 race. And quickly on third down and 15, Hewitt goes to the air. Bjornsson makes the catch at the 30-yard line. And that'll be a first down for the Huskies of Washington. Marvin Goodwin on the coverage. And 18 yards on the reception is Bjornsson, the backup quarterback, playing some wide receiver. And he's the one that had to signal in the plays last week as a backup uh, quarterback when Miles Corrigan, the tight end coach, mm -hmm. signals in the play. So Bjornsson kind of does it all for this Washington offense. But they caught UCLA off guard because they ran a hurry up offense there. UCLA hadn't even huddled or called a defensive play. So give that one uh, to the edge on the coaching staff and offensive coordinator Jeff Woodruff for Washington getting that first down like they did. That was the first reception of the year for Bjornsson as Heward will go back on first down and find McCarthy. And a first down across the 45 to the 47-yard line. And look at Washington. They are in a big-time hurry. 16 yards on the pickup. There's McCarthy. Walked on at Washington. Paid his own airfare to Seattle from a junior college down here in California. And to finally got a scholarship this past year. He's a senior from Boca Raton, Florida. First and 10, 46-yard line. Three wide receivers for the Huskies as Heward trying to go to Hill. And, man, flags. Whoa, look at the flags. I mean, I'll tell you, once that first official threw one shot, everybody got in the air. It did. That's Paul Guidry on the coverage. He got his arm all over the back of the receiver. But I'll tell you what I like about Washington so far. They have the confidence. Pass interference. Defense. 
penalty at the spot of the foul. First down. Maybe Hewitt's more comfortable in a hurry-up offense as we saw last week. Well, he could very well be, but one thing's for sure, this Washington team knows they can come back. See the receiver breaking inside. That's the Ron Hill. And Paul Guidry, number 12, gets there a little too soon. And the, as you said, the flags came from the field judge, the side judge, every judge said no way. First and 10, 44-yard line. Hewitt scrambles out of trouble, and he is tripped up. Guess who? Jameer Miller got a piece of his shoe and tripped him up as Hewitt was able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And if time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. That will come up immediately after this game, time permitting. And Jameer Miller, another big day for the Bruins of UCLA. Second and 11 from the 45. Hewitt hit! Hewitt is hit. Donnie Edwards, number 23, with his first sack of the year. Great call by Bob Beal, the defensive coordinator. Watch Donnie Edwards. The lineman stun outside, open up a hole for him inside. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just like a running back coming through an open hole. When the defensive lineman can set it up like that, a great call and beautifully executed by Donnie Edwards. We got a timeout on the field, 6.58 left to go in this game. Pepperidge back there. And the Bruins with a 14-point lead and 6.47 to go will have the football. A wise call to get Hewitt out into the pocket. What I want to see is watch Gidry number 12 drive the pass pattern on 14. Let's see if he bumps him in the back. I thought there was a little pushing and shoving here again. And he easily could have been called once again for pass interference, but no call was made on this play. And UCLA takes over on downs. Pretty close, though. A lot of pushing and shoving and jostling for position there. And that, I think that could have been called. So we'll see if UCLA is uh, content to run the ball and the clock here with 6.47 to go. Milliner, the lone setback. As the Bruins try to improve their record of 4-2 and two, and Milliner off the right side. And once again, just good, solid blocking by that offensive line. Well, Washington State leading Cal 21 to nothing. We'll tell you, Dave Barr is not playing in that game. He hurt his shoulder last week against Washington. And Mike Pattinson, the Cougars quarterback, is not playing. So Sean Dees is in there for the Cougars. And that's going to set up an interesting meeting with Arizona next week. Arizona, Washington State in Tucson. So the Cougars are leading it 21 to nothing. And Ole Miss has beaten Arkansas. And one of the games you can see next week on ABC. Ole Miss and Alabama out of the Southeastern Conference. That Southeastern Conference is getting shaken up a little bit today, aren't they, with uh, Alabama losing and with Florida losing to Auburn. Second and four, 47-yard line. Davis, the second back through, gets about a yard. Tackle made by DeMarco Farr, number 75. And let me just tell you, once again, I I, I, I as you I take a look at the UCLA bench, Kavitsky, 71, making his 40th career start. Stevens, 76, Flanagan, the center, 58, Sinkson, 73, the right guard, and Parker, 68, the right tackle. Those are the guys that have done the job. They have kept the Washington defense away from the quarterback, Wayne Cook. They've only allowed 10 sacks this year. And on a third down and two from the 45, Cook will go out of the shotgun. There, the first sack of the football. Washington picks it up. Jamal Fontaine is caught from behind. Inside the 15 at the 14-yard line by James Milliner. So just as we say, no sacks, the sack. Springstead, 49, was the man that came busting through. Fontaine picked it up and went 31 yards. I was surprised they just didn't run a draw with 32 in this situation. But as Springstead gets through, Cook cannot bring the ball down in time to secure it. And overcomes Jabal Fontaine if it wasn't for the speed of James Miller, number 36, who appears on the right side of the screen. Fontaine would have scored a touchdown. This is a key turnover, though, by the Husky defense. It gets the Huskies right back in the football game. 5 11 left to go. First and 10 is Hewitt. Wants to throw it. Theron Hill overthrown in the corner. Theron Hill, not a big target at 5'10 and 175, covered by Robert Gamble. So keep in mind, we go back again to last week where this Washington football team was down by 13 with 3.47 to go. Heward is familiar and 
I mean, he's got to be confident in these situations, John. He does. He's been able to do it before, and I think the whole unit, the entire offensive unit, is confident in what they can do right now at this time of the game. This is Washington's Rose Bowl game as Hewitt on the option. We'll take it inside the 10, down to the 8-yard line. George Case, 59. The nose tackle, just six foot two and 245 pounds, but extremely quick, extremely tough. And Heward, the quarterback, is down on the ground inside the 10, holding on to his side. And the trainers for the University of Washington will run out and take a look at him. I mentioned that uh, as Bjornsson, who's already played wide receiver today, a six foot five, 225 pound junior from Oakland, California, getting the right arm loop would check into the game if uh, Hewitt were not able to continue. That's right. Bjornsson has some experience. The best thing Hewitt could do right now is stay on the ground a little bit as you see Bjornsson warming up. There's Eric Bjornsson. Good football player, very versatile player. Hewitt on the option. UCLA will let him run all day long. And I think he just gets hit or falls on the football or gets shaken up. It's hard to see exactly what is hurting him right now. It seems like they're examining the midsection. He may have gotten hit in the back of the head. Let's see if we can take a look at that again. He might have got hit in the back of the head. Sometimes a knee to the back of the head will cause, uh, that's the vulnerable spot for the head, and that can cause you to have a mild concussion or just get knocked silly. Let's see if as he's going down, see how his head buckles there a little bit? You hate to see that, but I think he got knocked a little bit woozy. Did that ever happen to you, John? It did. did and it really, actually, if you get hit in the back of the head, yeah. that's, that's, I mean, you can get hit in the front of the, the head with the helmet and everything, because that's where you have protection from your skull, believe it or not. But the back of the head is where, if you get hit, uh, you're vulnerable to a concussion and get knocked out. So Bjornsson comes in at quarterback for the Huskies of Washington. He's thrown 16 passes this year. He's completed seven. And he'll throw it up to Bruner in the corner just off his hand. Ooh, and Bruner ran into the railing over there. Tommy Bennett was back on the coverage, so Bjornsson steps in at quarterback with 4.43 left to go, and now with a fourth down and six. Difficult situation for a quarterback to come in. You can see Bruner working on the right side. What Bjornsson tries to do is just lay it up for him, let him run under the football since he did have some position on Tommy Bennett, number eight. But, oh. Those railings are hard, and good thing Bruner was able to slow down enough so he didn't hurt himself there. Trips to the near side. Fourth down. They need to get to the two for a first down. Bjornsson will throw it to McCarthy. Touchdown! Wow! McCarthy, who came up with a huge touchdown reception last week to pull his team within six, gets this touchdown reception, and with the extra point would get him within seven. D.J. McCarthy toying with the emotions of people up in the Seattle area as he catches the ball wide open on a pick route and starts to stumble, and you think he's going to fall down, not even make it to the first down marker, which is the two-yard line, but he gets into the end zone, scores the touchdown, and manages to hold on to the football. Now, Hanson, the big extra point. He missed one earlier today, and he knocks that one up and through, and as Yogi Berra would say, is this deja vu all over again? <laughs> 32-25, the Bruins lead the Huskies and a lot of time left. In Pasadena, Jim Lambright, the first-year head coach of the Washington Huskies, longtime defensive coordinator, and he has uh, gotten to know what pressure situations are in the uh, past week. They come from behind win last week against Cal. Now his team in a similar situation as Teddy Lawrence will down it in the end zone and UCLA will have it first and 10 from the 20-yard line. But right now, let's send you to our New York studios and John Saunders. John? Thank you very much, John. Just uh, another reason not to have that uh, artificial turf as far as I'm concerned. It is so much harder than grass. You know, John, you played at Veterans Stadium in like Philadelphia that. and Seattle on those, those rugs. UCLA, first and 10, 20-yard line. Heward got banged up in the head. He too. got a, a knee to the back of the head. Is the handoff to Milliner. 
Milliner running hard, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of about one. Hillary Butler and Steve Springstead on the tackle, so a gain of one on that play. So the clock running now. UCLA with one timeout left. Washington with two timeouts remaining. And Washington State has moved it out to a 24 to nothing. A lead. Deeds, the 66-yard touchdown pass. So with Mike Pattinson, the starter out, Sean Deeds has come in to lead the way. And Oregon State and USC just underway at the Coliseum here in Los Angeles. Second and nine, 29-yard line, Davis and Milliner. The running back says the sun has broken through here at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Cook wants to throw and drops. 99, Brian Richards had his hands in the ball. Richards, a former defensive player who was converted to tight end when Brian Allen was hurt. Had the ball down around his knees, just couldn't pull it up. And he was wide open. And had he caught that pass, he would have been able to get a first down easily. UCLA would have kept possession of the football, be first down, and there'd be about three and a half minutes left in this ball game. As it is, the clock is stopped with 3.53, and the Bruins must convert. Third down and nine. UCLA 5 of 14 in third down situations. Washington's been coming hard the last couple of plays. And the pass broken up. The pass broken up. Mike Wynn, the intended receiver. And I'd be interested to see if Cook was across the line of scrimmage that time because he really came forward. Russell Harrison there on the coverage. And three and out for the Bruins, and they've got to punt it. And I'm surprised that Homer Smith tried to throw the football in two consecutive downs like that. I thought they ran the football pretty well. The last time they had the ball, they had a third and two when they threw the ball. Here, I think they could have thrown the football or run the football and taken more time off the clock. Now, Darren Shager has to kick into a pretty strong wind, and I think the Huskies are going to have good field position. Fourth punt of the day for Shager against the wind from the five-yard line. So Washington should get good field position. Vino Bryant back, and this is a good kick. Shager got a good boot this time. Oh, goodness. Bryant never put his hand up, and number 12 there for UCLA was all over him. Paul Guidry, what is he doing? Never even looked. I mean, of all people, Paul Guidry is a punt returner. He knows the rules. He knows Isn't what he's funny? supposed to do. And he definitely knows you're not supposed to do this before the ball is caught by Bean O'Brien. And what you, he realizes it. That's what you call a serious brain lock right oh, there, John. Oh, my. And things are becoming undone here for the Bruins. Guidry's a redshirt freshman, but as John mentioned, he returns punts 45 yards. Interference with the opportunity to catch the kick, 15 yards from the spot of first down. So Shanger hit a good punt into the wind. Boy, he did. And Pretty the penalty win. against UCLA. And now the pressure on that Bruins defense. And I'll tell you one thing, you know with Jim Lambright, they have nothing to lose. If they score a touchdown, they're this, going for hey, two. This is because it. they're down by seven. This is their Rose Bowl. They don't play another game here until November 11th of 95 against UCLA. Bjornsson's still the quarterback. First and 10, 49-yard line. Bjornsson going for Kralik, who fell down on his route. Jim Lambright, uh, first year as head coach, I asked him about uh, the difference for him being a coordinator and a head coach. I had to balance up between defense and offense uh, a little bit, but uh, my style is going to be with the players. I'm Don James was a coach from a tower. Uh, I'm going to be on the sideline. Uh, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be out in the offensive huddle and the defensive huddle and uh, working with the kicking teams and. Uh, uh, I want to be hands-on. That, that's the way I am, and, uh, and I'm not going to change that stuff. Can't be an assistant that many years and not be hands-on. Second and 10 from the 49. In motion. Napoleon Kaufman, he's been awfully quiet since the first quarter. Bjornsson avoids the rush, but can't get away from all of them. Matt Werner, 92, his second sack of the day. And Donovan Gallatin set that play up. He is the guy that they love to use in blitzing situations. Came right up the middle. Watch number 26. He's the one who makes penetration first. See number 26, Donovan Gallatin. And after that, Matt Werner is able to wrap him up. But there's nobody in the backfield. And UCLA well knew there's nobody to pick up the blitz on that play. See, Hewart's uh, got the uh, ice around his ribs there. On third and 10 from the 49, Bjornsson gets away from two man, throws it. Intercepted! Number 22, Marvin Goodwin. The pressure that time. Donnie Edwards was one of the men back in there on Bjornsson. And it was his running mate, Marvin Goodwin, number 22, and also Gallatin was in there in the secondary. <laughs> UCLA's defense comes up big. 
Bjornsson has no time to throw the football. He's trying to just do what he can to get as open as possible, get his receiver some time, get the football to him. But Goodwin makes a great break on the football, realizes where the receiver are, is rather, and he makes the interception. I'll tell you what. They really brought the heat. That, that Bruins defense really brought the heat in the last two downs. John, they didn't get into a prevent. They no, stayed they with the same kind of defense that it got them where they're at right now. And look at this run by Ricky Davis. Caught from behind at the 40-yard line. The man to get him was Lawyer Malloy. 16 yards on the pickup. And my, UCLA and Washington, 253 left to go. 32-25. Good lead block by the fullback. And look at that exceptional running in the open field. Lawyer Malloy doesn't make the tackle number nine. We have another touchdown perhaps for UCLA. But I'll tell you what, getting back to the defensive calls by the Bruins and Bob Field, they took advantage of an inexperienced quarterback too, and that was the right call to make, bringing those blitzing linebackers. UCLA and Washington both with four turnovers. First and 10, 38 yard line. Ricky Davis the handoff. Ricky Davis inside the 35. He gets down to the 32-yard line where Springstead makes the tackle. As the clock continues to run, keep in mind Washington has two timeouts remaining. And UCLA just one. And against the Huskies, it's always too early to celebrate. Washington who? Miller got a good one. And Goodwin came up with some plays this afternoon. Forced the punter to pull the ball down, had some interceptions. Second and two from the 32-yard line. The clock continues to run. And Milliner very close Milliner. to the first down. Fontaine, 47, came in to make the tackle. And now Jim Lambright's got to start thinking about utilizing those remaining timeouts as the clock will continue to run as it appears UCLA is just short of the first down. Terry Donahue, look at Lambright, he can't quite decide. Now it's third down, do I take it here on third and short, and then they get the first down, then it's over with, or do we try to stuff him here? Well, he used it up too much of the play clock there now to call a timeout, but they have to stop the Bruins right here. Third and less than one, Cook has done a marvelous job today at quarterback. Four touchdown passes to Stokes, and Davis is tripped up, and we should get a quick timeout here. Ricky Davis. Yeah, timeout should be called. Springstead. Makes a tackle, and finally, we get the call for the timeout. Still lost about four or five seconds when the Huskies didn't have to. Timeout, so Huskies. Washington and UCLA, seven points separate the two teams. Those games are always close, and I want to remind you, next Saturday on ABC Sports, we've got regional action upcoming for you, 12.30 Pacific, 1.30 Mountain Time. Illinois and Michigan out of the Big Ten. Fresno State and BYU out of the WAC, Alabama and Old Miss from the Southeastern Conference in a Pac-10 game. I'll tell you what, now the decision for the Bruins with the ball on the 20-yard line, 29-yard line has got to be, do we go for a field goal? Do we go for a first down? Do we pooch punt it? I mean, the field goal would probably be in the neighborhood of 46 yards, which is a long way. You risk it getting blocked. But if you hit it, you put the game out of reach with a 10-point lead with uh, 55 seconds left in the ball game. On the other hand, you know, if you go for it and try and run the football, you may not convert. The ball, the clock stops. I'm sorry, 59 seconds left. The clock would stop, and the Huskies would take over on downs. If you punt it, you might uh, kick the ball into the end zone and only pick up about nine yards anyway. So this is what's going on in that UCLA huddle right now. Here's an interesting note, especially concerning Jim Lambright, the uh, head coach and the uh, former defensive coordinator, still defensive coordinator. The Huskies are 3-0 this year and 31-1 and since 1990 in games which Lambright's defenders allowed 17 or fewer points. And 32-25, the point totals up. The Huskies are down. They've got one timeout left on fourth, and let's call it a long yard. And I think this is the right it. call. Davis hit behind the line of scrimmage, and the ball will go over to the University of Washington. Jamal Fontaine was the man in there. So the changeover will give the Washington offense one more life with Eric Bjornsson in at quarterback. You know, I, I do agree with the call. I may not agree with the fact that they, you know, they didn't get it or whatever call they made running the ball off tackle like that. But I'd rather have the ball in the hands of my quarterback and the running back 
than in the hands of a place kicker or punter in that situation. One timeout remaining for Washington. They trail by seven. Bjornsson. Intercepted. Teddy Lawrence. Touchdown. on the interception return for the touchdown. The second pick of the day by Teddy Lawrence, the sophomore from San Diego, California. His third interception of the year. A penalty marker's been thrown over in the area of the celebration, but who cares? Well, you can't fault Eric Bjornsson. I mean, it was a poorly thrown ball. He's only thrown 16 passes all this year. That ball was thrown late. It was thrown with too much air under it, meaning it was lobbed. Joe Kralik, number nine, is open early. He's settled. He's waiting for the football. The ball comes late. It comes inside. It should have been outside. And Teddy Lawrence is all over it as he ices the game for the Bruins. A little styling going into the end zone. You've got to style it, man. got to style it here in this area. you got to style it when you're going to win it. And UCLA has taken a timeout, 47 seconds left. Now watch Bjornsson, I mean, he looks left first, he looks right. Now watch this ball just float out of there as he throws off his back foot. Looked like he might have got his arm hit. Maybe his arm did get hurt, but Teddy Lawrence is there to make the interception. Well, I'll tell you, what I liked about UCLA in the late stages here today, uh, John, they stayed aggressive. I mean, you know, even though, uh, you know, Cook, they went back to pass on that they third did. down situation. and. Uh, they, uh, they stayed aggressive late in the game, unlike Cal last week that really laid back after being aggressive all day against Washington and allowed them to come back and score a couple touchdowns against a non-blitzing, you know, nickel-dime sort of package yeah. defense. That's yeah. true, but we found out that Cal, part of the reason why they went into a shell offensively was because David Barr had hurt his shoulder. But Terry Donahue, Homer Smith offensively, they did stay aggressive, and that usually sends a signal to your offense that, hey, we believe in you. Quarterback Wayne Cook had a great day today. They believed in him, and this UCLA team is able to pull out this victory as Bow Wow comes over and visits with Terry Dunny. <laughs> slap him on the back. Bow Wow is an well, old, dear friend of everybody. He's Dick Vermeil when he was a coach here. We went with Vermeil out to the Eagles, and now he's helping Terry Dunahue on the sidelines during the course of the week. Merton to attempt the point after. And Bjorn Merton's kick is good. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Steve Springstead of uh, the University of Washington, an outstanding day defensively with 12 tackles and a sack, and then J.J. Stokes, and let's give an assist to Wayne Cook, four sure. touchdown receptions. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial needs. Right now, let's go to New York and John Saunders.